where you live. Um, and try to keep your comments to two minutes or less. That would be excellent. Um, and uh, also, if you are with us digitally, if you would uh, change your your name, if you can, uh, to your first and last name so I can address you properly, that would be great. Um, and I think that is all the things I have to say. We'll start with folks in person. Anybody like to make a comment? Go ahead. Uh, Stephen Whitaker. Uh, I just want to point out the impact of kicking the house homelessness task force can down the road another week. There's a particular the Christchurch agreement. This is a city funded uh, cooperative venture with Good Samaritan to have a shelter at Christchurch. That agreement was contingent upon there being day warming space. I'm told that it wasn't until today that the agreement with the transit Green Mountain Transit has been signed. Um, I still don't have a copy of that, but there's a per particular person staying at Christ Church who has been no trespassed and is left out in the cold and we our safety net cannot tolerate that we have leverage it's our building we are negotiating the terms we're pay, paying city money to clean it and provide toilets we need to lift the no trespass order for the woman. I'm watching her deteriorate. Her spiritual and mental health is deteriorating daily. Okay, so this is not something that can be ignored. Um, restroom City Hall. For y'all to ignore that repeatedly, repeatedly, be deceived about the costs of securing the main hallway is, is in callous indifference and selfish. Plain out selfish. People who are out on the streets need bathrooms. Uh, I appreciate and I want to thank you for the action in uh, Cameron's offer to set up the recording and the laptop and the audio for the CVPSA meeting last Thursday night. Unfortunately, the, the doors were locked. Uh, the, the, you need to take action. The, Door locking of the city hall when public meetings needs to be managed daily. And I think it's too complex or too inconsistent for Burtis or VC3 to handle. I think it should be handled either by the city manager's office or the city clerk's office and programmed for a specific time after the last scheduled meeting to automatically lock the doors. But the as a fail safe, the, the uh, automatic pad paddle the handicap paddle should work and a sign put there saying if, if it's after hours use the handicap paddle uh, and then the handicap paddle gets locked at as of the end of the last meeting this is all doable but in effect there was a violation of open meeting law again by cvpsa to conduct a meeting with those door locked the state legislature would have halted the proceedings and then what's worse the she refused to avail herself of the city laptop and speakers, and then the battery went dead, disconnecting the chair from the meeting. So it's just a farce of, of uh, technical and uh, desire to uh, adhere to the law. I think that's enough. I probably used up my two minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone with us online wish to make a comment? You can uh, raise your hand using the uh, raise hand icon, which is under reactions. Um, you could also just uh, wave, um, or you can unmute yourself and let us know that you want to speak. Anyone with us digitally wish to say anything? Okay, I am not seeing anybody. Uh, so we are going to move on then. All right. Uh, so on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion? I move the consent agenda as published. I'll second it. I'll say it. Okay, so there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. All right, so we do have uh, an appointment to make. Uh, so uh, we've uh, got an appointment to make to the Public Art Commission. 
And uh, I believe there is just uh, the one uh, person. And I don't see Jesse Jacobs with us digitally, uh, but I could be wrong. So, yeah, I don't think I don't think he is here. So, um, is there a motion regarding this appointment? Go I ahead, move that we go into executive session to discuss the appointment of a public officer or employee pursuant to one VSA three thirteen A three. Okay, so there's a motion and a second. Further discussion. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay, so all right, we will be back. Please say aye. 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 And opposed. Okay. Uh, uh, Jack, go ahead. Uh, I move we appoint Jesse Jacobs to the Public Art Commission. Okay, further discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And opposed. All right. Thank you, Jesse. We are grateful that you're stepping up for that. It's great. All right, so we are on to the the bulk of what we're going to be talking about this evening, which is uh, the budget. And um, I, we should have all received a, the Excel file in which you can um, enter uh, different things and play with uh, numbers, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you, Kelly, I, uh, for putting that together. Um, so to, to start off, um, I think, um, well, I'm going to ask staff to um, start us off at least with uh, what, Sure. What they have yeah um, so we don't have a lot you know obviously we gave you the big overview presentation last meeting hopefully you've had a chance to pick up the budget book for those of you that wanted the uh, official book if you don't we can get it to you it's also all online and was sent to you electronically um, and uh, you know it's really our presentation to you you have all the information we're here to answer any questions clarify anything that you want and help you through the discussion but we're not going to we won't lead you because you've got to get where you want to go. We have some re Kelly's here. Uh, the department heads are almost all online. If you have specific questions about anything, and um, you know, we can put the spreadsheet up, the working spreadsheet up on the screen if necessary. We have uh, sheets about the capital plan and the various funding. What's in those? If people want those, so we can provide some of the detail uh, for visual if you'd like. Um, other than that, we're here to support you as you discuss and decide and get where you need to go. Great. Okay. <laughs> um, do you all want to talk at all about the CIP stuff specifically or no? Was that addressed to staff? Y yes. Not. Uh, I mean, we're happy to talk about any portion of the budget. I okay. It'd be good to know where the council would like to focus its attention. So, okay. Um, we can. We assume we will be explaining it at some point tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we should probably start with that if that is okay. Yeah. Um, Unless anybody wants to other places. Yeah, sure. Is 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 that all right, team? If we start with that, I realize that that is. I mean, it is a big portion of the budget, but it's just a part of the budget. Um, sure. I'm imagining that we'll go from there. Uh, into I, I just want to hear from um, every individual if you up for, are up for it uh, to tell us about like what you uh, how you're reacting to this budget what would you like to see uh, in terms of changes additions subtractions etc um, and we're, we'll sort of collect all of our thoughts and then go from there is that does that sound like an okay plan team any other suggestions open to suggestions okay all right, let's let's start with that. Start if that's with the yeah, okay, I'll yeah. Give, give Kelly a chance to get fired up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go ahead and just pull up a summary sheet of the capital fund um, and what's sort of in um, and sort of identified online. But the sheet hopefully will help with um, just some clarity around where the items align within the different buckets of funding. Um. And I think it's worth noting too that it's, I think it's super helpful to understand like what's in the city budget and then with the ARPA funds like 
how the, the staff is proposing what falls into what bucket. So I think that that, Kelly, I appreciate that. And I think that that really makes a lot of sense in terms of how we approach this. Yeah. So the sheet I have up here um, is a sort of compilation of all of the items. This is a little bit small, so I will try to um, expand it a little bit. Um, but in this first column right here, and I'll, I'll get into the details, but just the way that this is set up, um, you know, got, we've got the traditional capital funding um, and then so on throughout the sheet, um, water sewer bond items, water sewer bond items, then ARPA, and then our um, CIP, um restoration fund money um, and so just kind of taking it from a higher level overview um within Excuse the budget me, book Kelly? yes i hate to interrupt but could you also share that Th this this sheet yeah oh yeah yep let me i'm actually i'm gonna pause for just a minute can i would it be okay to email it to everybody well, no, she she share oh share, share screen? on the screen oh yeah. okay thank you sorry <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think people who are watching on uh, Zoom also yes. probably have an easier time reading it that way. That, that, yeah, absolutely. Let's see. Share screen. All right, excellent. Thanks. No problem. And so a lot of this detail can also be found on the CIP um, section of the budget that's online. Um, and then also within that um, category, there's also a breakdown of, you know, sort of what's in, what's out. Um, and so that's helpful. But this master sheet is really what we use for deliberations internally as a team. I'm just trying to get this to load here. Um, and so just as I'm sort of getting into this list that we've got on the screen, there's also one that is online, but just a higher level overview. The debt service, well, let me back up, sorry. So the total CIP plan for FY23 is about 2.149 million. Um, and that is comprised of debt service, which is $716,000 or so. Then the total annual capital projects is just over a million. And then equipment we've got slated for traditional capital that is of 359,548. Um, and so that's where the plan comes from. And so just jumping over here um, into this sheet, um, this is what has sort of been identified as what's in and what's out. Um, let me, I'm not able to move this mouse. Sorry, everyone. It's because the thing is closed. Yeah. So what I wanna do here is just jump on down to the bottom. Oh, I need to add the mouse here, actually. I'm gonna take this out for a minute here, sorry guys. And stop the share so that I can actually use the mouse on this machine. Sort of spoke a little too soon there, hold on. Actually. Make sure this is the right version. <clears throat> it's actually not the right version of the sheet. So hold on. I downloaded this before I came on. So let me make sure I've got the right version. That's better. Sorry, guys. Um, let me share my screen again here. Okay, now, now I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. Because I was like, this just doesn't look as pretty as the one that, you know, was the final <laughs> version. So let's just uh, back up here a little bit. So in summary, just going over what's in here, I'm going to, if it's okay, um, I'm just going to go over what's in each of the items. And then from there, um, if there are questions, we can, can get into that. 
Um, so just starting here um, on line seven, we've got some tree uh, care equipment um, for $3,000. There are tree guards for $5,000. Um, there's um, some bike path or um, path money here for $5,000. Um, and then this is a combination also, I should mention, of both equipment and um, project. Um, so in this left-hand corner for me, um, where there's the type and it's indicated with a P or an E, that's, you know, what it is. So it's equipment for an E and P is project. Um, so we've got a parks truck um, for 5,000. We've got some tree grates um, for 8,000. Then large parks for 10,000. Um, then we've got the Berry Street bike path for 20,000. Um, we've got crack seal for 20,000. Um, and then moving on down here to fire equipment. Um, this includes the lease payments for the um, new engine ambulance and for the power stretchers. So this really actually is about uh, $15,000 worth of equipment um, for the fire department. Um, the other is really um, lease payments. Then moving on to the parks and trees truck three. You'll notice as I go down the line, there's a lot of equipment on this list. Um, these were working towards getting things back up and running. Um, then on to the Route 2 Town Line Bridge for 27.5. There's um, a DPW um, two by four um, pickup truck um, for 30,000. Then there's the Main Street Sidewalk Improvement Project for 50,000. There's some money in here for IT infrastructure investments. Um, for 53,000. Again, in this column, these are all traditional capital funds. So the summary that I gave at the beginning, these are all kind of incorporated into that. Um, and then I'll get on to the other buckets as we get underway here. Um, then we've got um, the F550 from DPW for 65,000 or so. We've got fog seal for 65,000. There's $75,000 in here for um, project and engineering support um, to go along with a lot of the big projects that we've got going right now. Um, then we've got a uh, vehicle replacement um, for uh, the police department um, for 76.5. And then you'll notice here as we sort of break away this, this Marvin Street slope failure, as we get into, into these other columns here, you can see how they've been identified within the bond category rather than just a traditional capital category. So that's, um, going to be happening as well, but I'll, I'll cover those in summary after I go through the traditional capital list. Um, then there is some money in here for ADA compliance, $100,000, which covers um, projects within City Hall. Um, then there is funding for year two of the contract for the reappraisal. Um, we also are working to set um, a reserve in place so that in future years when we have a reappraisal, there won't be such a hit um, and a contract cost. So we're trying to pivot there, but for this free appraisal, um, we're, we're taking it um, within the capital fund. And then um, we've got $505,000 for cold in place recycling. Um, and so this, this along with the fog ceiling and crack ceiling goes towards trying to reach the 70 pavement condition index um, number that the council is really looking to do. Um, there's also other money within um, the capital funding and other buckets to reach that goal too. And so our intent is that in the future we'll be standing this up um, even further. It'll take about three years, three to four years to reach that goal, but we're working towards it. Um, then we've got $50,000 here for trail, trail building. Um, and then on down to the list, so you can see Which that we building trails, not a trail building. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes. Um, and so as I'm scrolling down here, you can kind of see the, the number of projects that are on this list. Some of them are funded with other buckets of money, but there's a lot that, you know, you may not be funded. Um, we, we tried our best, um, but some things will have to wait. Um, and so just scrolling down here, the total within this traditional capital category is about $1.4 million or so. Um, there is an additional 150,000 here that you see at the bottom, which is for the wastewater sewer trucks that we talked about at the CIP meeting. Um, so there are some purchases there and I'll just scroll, scroll up so you can um, see them. So there's $40,000 here. Oh, and also the vector. 
I'm just glad I'm scrolling up because I don't want to miss anything. Um, there's also a dump truck and um, a few other items here, um, two pickup trucks sort of on tap within sort of this traditional category. Um, and so just taking it back up to the top here so you can see, I don't need to go all the way back to the top because there's not anything else in bonding, but you'll note um, what I've done also too is I've color coded the bonds within this bond category because we, we discussed at the capital committee meeting pairing bonding together um, in certain packages. And so I've identified based on the listing and based on um, committee feedback for different um, bond items. Um, and so we can get into that. But this first is shaded in this color here. Um, it looks kind of peach up there, kind of purple over here, but you get the gist. Um, so there's the Marvin Street slope failure. There's $250,000 in here as part of the um, energy net zero plan. Um, or the, another alternative to that plan could potentially be using some of the um, energy returns, the methane from the water recovery resource facility um, energy output. So that's an option too. Um, yes. Uh, I'm just noticing um, that that is also, that, that line is combined with the ADA compliance. I just don't remember that being combined with ADA compliance. It's not. I was just trying to keep it. I was trying not to add an additional line. Okay. It's so, not. Sorry about that. Because yeah, <laughs> um, I, I just want to point out, you know, that the, uh, as, as far as I recall, the, uh, the energy upgrade that we were discussing was about 250000 mm -hmm. um, Yep. And, that, and that's... Yes, thank you for clarifying. Yeah. And actually, you know, I was, I was like, it's just one line. I can, I can amend the sheet pretty yeah. easily, and I just didn't do it. So sorry about that. No, that's but okay. no, that's thanks okay. for asking. Yeah, no um, and so then, just scrolling down here, we've got five hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the main and Barry Street intersection. Um, also, I'll take a minute to note that online with the capital improvement items that are listed, you can drill into those and take a look at the components and the notes that staff has submitted on those projects. So, and also locations, there's a mapping um, component to that too. Um, so then moving on, these are all the same shade, by the way. Um, we've got uh, lighting conversion for 250,000, Confluence Park for 600,000. And I'm just gonna, I don't, and that, 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 that is all that we have with that particular shade. Um, then we've got the Recreation Center land purchase um, for $1.5 million. And then in this um, first blue bar is East State Street. Um, and so that's about $7.2 million. There is some grant funding associated with that, so that'll be a little bit less. But we just put the full amount here so you can see what the project cost would be in total. Um, <laughs> And then moving down here, you can see phase two of the water resource recovery dryer project um, that was discussed at the last meeting. So that's captured in full here. There was some conversation about whether or not we would um, use some of the bond capacity left over from phase one. Um, and we're you know, looking into that a little bit. It may be a good idea to consider just putting this all on the ballot um, as the 16.5 so that then you know we are calling that out as the total cost of the project. And then also if there are any overruns, then we would have a little bit of breathing room. Um, just wanna make sure that we have enough because it's such a big project. Um, and then lastly on the list here is the TIF um, garage repayment um, that you know we'll work on getting squared away in short order so that we can kind of clear that from the general fund um, since we're no longer moving forward with that. So you can see with the two bond lists, we've got the 8.4, almost five for, you know, sort of the, the non water sewer bonds and then 19.7 um, for the water sewer related items that includes the East State Street portion and um, phase two. So then I've also got the split up into sort of other one time monies that are of exception, um, getting ARPA funding is is pretty fantastic. You'll note down here at the bottom what I've done is I've just I've noted what we've received to date. We also have done the lost revenue calculations put out through the league and GFOA, which is the Government Finance Association, um, just to make sure that we're in compliance and could claim up to this first allotment of money 
um, in lost revenue, and that's the most broad category of the ARPA funding. The rest of it is, um, you know, pretty specific. Um, and so there are guardrails around that funding, although um, it does support water sewer infrastructure. And so you'll see in our planning what that looks like um, as I get into my sheets a little bit more here. But um, in summary, uh, just coming up to the top here for ARPA, just so we can kind of see what's in that phase one bucket. I have another sheet that I'll show you that has phase two ARPA and then also has um, some of the CIP um, reserve monies called out. Um, so just scrolling up here, we've got a cemetery truck. And I'll also note in this first list, um, these are items that were delayed due to COVID. And so we're restoring funding for projects and equipment that we had already sort of said were a go, but then held back um, because of just the, the COVID impacts and mitigation plans. Um, so we've got a money in here for um, large park work. Um, We've got $40,000 in here um, for fire EMS for a truck replacement. We've got $135,000 in here for a couple of cruisers along with the fit ups that go along with that. And scrolling down here. We've got um, for Granite Street, the storm lining, $85,000. We've got um, $30,000 for parks for the, and trees for the staff bathroom. Um, that's been on the list and kind of an item ongoing. Um, and then we've got Phelps Street storm replacement for 90,000. Um, we've got a truck for recreation for 70. And then we've got a, a street sweeper replacement for 275. This next one is a big one and it's one that we've been trying to figure out how to manage. We've got a grant associated with this. So the total project cost on Grout Road Bridge is $507,000. The amount that would go towards or be spent out of ARPA would be 332,000. And so we would be able to get that project done and off our books. It's been kind of hanging out there for quite some time as I understand it. Um, and so this total ARPA column for this phase one funding is almost about $1.1 million, which is our first allotment. Um, the remaining balance that we have for this first amount of money cash on hand would be about $14,000 or so. So we've kind of captured what we could potentially use that money for. Um, and I'll get into the phase two in a minute here. Um, but then moving on to the uh, CIP restoration reserve money. The reason why this money is available is, as you will recall, we, um, per the deficit mitigation plan, ended up cutting $1.5 million. <laughs> this is no small feat. Um, and so we ended up coming up short about a million, which then left this $500,000 figure or so, not figure of cash, that actually got transferred over into the capital fund and it just stayed there. And so now what we're aiming to do is just restore the projects that were put on hold so that then we can stand ourselves back up. Um, I will note that it's not the total 505 that we've got left in reserve because in FY20, we did have um, a deficit in the fund of about $70,000. So that's the remaining balance that's available to be spent or $435,000. Um, so in this bucket um, that we've identified, there's $125,000 for a sidewalk plow. There's $180,000 for cold in place recycling um, for the streets. And so this would work towards the 70 um, PCI pavement condition index goal that we have. And we'd be able to pivot rather nicely into future years so that we could keep investing the same amount of money year over year um, to, to make that happen. And that's along with the 505 that's in the traditional capital plan and the other money for fog seal and crack seal. Um, and then we've got 47,000 for snowblower and then um, a pickup truck for 34,000. And so this really would set um, our sort of equipment um, back up to where we need to be um, and sort of put us in a good position. That being said, we still have some ground to cover. Um, this is just kind of sort of the path back, um, if you will. Um, and then, there is $15,000 here for part of the vector replacement. You saw that in water sewer, that was that portion of this installment. So it just starts to build that back up so we can purchase a new vector when it's time. We're trying to take an eye towards, 
you know, installments and doing what we can when we can. Um, and then there is uh, $34,000 in here for dam removal. We'll be looking for grants for this as well. It's a total cost of about $120,000 to do this study. Um, should clarify study, not the actual dam removal, because that's a bargain. We should definitely do that if that's the case. Um, so then you can see that comes to 435. So um, that is currently what we have on the list. Um, and then what I do want to show you is the ARPA 2 list, which then has some of the other items that we're proposing to move forward with um, when we get that money. And we should get that probably in September of next year. Um, and so we'll have that on tap to use. And so if folks are okay with that, I'll move towards that sheet or I can stay here if there are questions. Just kind of refresher on where we are with the rec center. So yeah, it's just a land purchase and no money is envisioned. We'll be coming to that. Okay. We've <laughs> <laughs> got some more charts. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, Lawrence. I mean, do you want to wait for infrastructure? I mean, they're they're on this point, but I don't know if you feel like your mid presentation. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I mean, I guess. Okay, so just just a couple and really like the frame I'm wondering about is with the federal infrastructure bill and knowing that roads bridges dam removal. Um, you know, as some of the specific examples I see we're funding here like. Are we. I guess I just want to make sure that we're like preparing to take full advantage of any opportunities there like if we commit to doing it now might we build you know grout road bridge for example and then like oh if we'd waited a year we could have had it federally funded or a bigger portion of it so i guess i'm just like curious what what analysis you're using to set the priorities with that or like if we get it going are we going to be in a better position to take advantage of that and the timeline will work out great um so just so I, I, I'll take a stab at that. Um, we obviously are aware that this is coming. We don't know how it's going to work. We don't exactly what it's going to fund. So we decided to prepare just with what we need. Um, you know, the, the good part is this budget doesn't take effect till July 1. So there's a lot of time, you know, there's seven months in between, six, seven months to learn more. Um, you know, we can always shift projects out of this to those that funding, if we're successful in obtaining it, we don't know how much is going to come directly to cities and towns, how much is going to come to the state, how it's going to be dispersed. So there's a lot of money, but how much is directly related? You know, we just a lot of unknowns. So we could conceivably, you know, say half of this got shifted into those monies. We could come back to the council and say, okay, now this is this money's freed up. You know, here's the next backlog of projects that's coming. So, it, you know. That's the, the beauty of, of these, you know, you're basically appropriating the dollar sums and we're showing you what's in them and making sure that the buckets contain what you want them to, to contain, but until we actually do something. And is there a chance we'll do a project before we could have had it funded? Yes. But I think overall, um, our goal would be to get as much out of the other funds. And I think actually, uh, you and I had this conversation, you know, one of the, we had, we're trying to build in the full 120 for this, you know, the, the dam removal. And then after our conversation, understanding that it was going to be a lot of dam removal money, we thought, well, maybe this will match a grant to do the study. So we only put the 34 in. Thinking, you know, but, you know, in others, we just, we know there's going to be a lot. We don't know how much, you know, how, I don't know how much the state will keep. You know, unlike ARPA, I don't think there's a direct appropriation to cities and towns and counties. So. Thank you. That's really helpful. Um, I guess just in that vein, is there, I mean, so we don't know some details, but this one's a lot more descriptive than ARPA was in some ways in terms of, you know, it's like there's bridges, you know, it's like it tells you more, there's more guidance, I think, just in because it was of the way um, the bill was enacted. I guess I'm just wondering, like, how much are we knowing that likely we would get some money or there's certain pots of like the types of projects that are going to be more likely to be funded is there any like shifting of priorities that we're doing to front load 
so that we're ready, like doing engineering, like the dams, I think is a great example. We've been wanting to do that. Like we know there's federal money coming or is that, I assume that's like part of the calculus or how much well, is that in, being considered? This, for the dams, for example, the, the funds are here is to do the engineering. We don't have any work done on dams so far. So we, we would need to, we would need to start with that and figure out what we needed and then seek the funding for removal. Um, many of our street projects are, you know, various streets of design. Paving is not a particularly heavy design. And whether we move these projects or just, you know, we, we have no end of those types of projects that we can do. Obviously, East State Street's a big project. If we get more money for that, then we don't have to bond as much money. The same with the wastewater plant and others. Those are, you know, the big ticket items. So, um, yeah, we are definitely planning to pursue whatever we can. But in the meantime, we're, we're planning, you know, not knowing what we'll get. Thank you. Um, last one on this, I was just curious, how do we calculate the, it came up last meeting when we were talking about the difference in um, trucks and equipment and when we're looking at um, electric vehicles compared to fossil fuel vehicles and, you know, often the upfront cost is more, but then the lifetime cost can be lower. I don't, I don't know that that's necessarily always true, but I know it's sometimes true. So are we taking that into account when we're um, budgeting for these where maybe our upfront cost might be higher, but we're both meeting our net zero goal and long-term saving the community money? So we did talk to the staff about that after the conversation last week and asked them to start doing that. We don't have any real revised numbers and then it came up again at the capital projects meeting on Monday. So where we're at now is one of our, our plan, immediate plan is that one of the water sewer trucks that's on this list will be an electric truck. And we'll, we thought that was a good way to test it and get it to see how it works through the winter with the charging and, you know, really give it, you know, because there's the cost and then is, can it do the job that we need it to do? And we had talk about trying to build in the cost of a fast a high speed charger because um, before we invest in the fleet we, we need to be able to charge it uh, and we even had we went so far as to talk about whether the, that should be you know sort of open to the public and we talked about well should you know our emergency vehicles have to wait an hour or two for some you know, so I think the thought was to install try to find the funds in here and we haven't we just met Monday so we haven't tweak this all yet, yeah, but the, the takeaway from the recommendation from the capital committee is to try to put, I think, $50,000 in here to build a, you know, build the charging capacity. So knowing that at some point in the future, we're going to be moving to that. So we're... And I'll be curious, uh, also, just to follow up on that, Any, anything further? Just a, just to follow up on that, um, uh, I think the the, uh, the estimation of 50,000, it was, I just want to make sure that you know it was, it's an estimate. <laughs> yeah. We, and so I, I assume you all are going to do will, your We will be fully. Okay. <laughs> Great. Um, okay, cool. Uh, yeah, Jack. I, I went through all this on my paper book, and so I have all my things <clears throat> by page on the paper book. But one of the things, one of the questions I have is right here on the screen now, line 56 on the street lighting conversion. And uh, I, I wonder if we have, uh, similar to what uh, what Lauren's question was, do we have a calculation of the uh, payback time for, for that conversion for the reduced uh, energy costs? That's an excellent question. Um, I, I don't have one handy. Um, I know that there was a lot of work done around this um, proposal. Um, and so we can certainly get that for sure. Um, and that's one of the benefits to this particular project is that there would be a payback. Um, and so it's a great question. I, I don't have the, that answer at the ready though. Okay, thanks. Any other questions about that we've seen so far? Um, I know we have a question about rec center stuff and we'll come back to that, but anything any further about this? Okay, right, go ahead. Okay, um, so uh, just to sort of highlight based on the bonds that are noted up here, and I'm sure we'll circle back to have a conversation about them, but we've got them sort of lumped into four categories here. 
um, sort of infrastructure includes the things that are like the street lighting conversion, Confluence Park, those items. Um, and then we get East State Street, the rec center, and then phase two of the wastewater treatment facility. So that's what, how we've got it currently um, put together. We can change it in any way that you want, um, but just for discussion purposes, I just wanted to note that before um, I stop my share and just bring up the lost revenue. Um, and and just before you do that, I wanted to answer Connor's yeah. question. So the proposal here is strictly a land purchase at this point. So um, that's an estimate of the, the value of the land. We have informed the landowner that we've put this number in the budget. We, the, the committee that's working on it knows that this, that's where we're going. So uh, it, there is an appraisal being done and obviously that could affect, but between this and uh, the reserve for the, in the rec department, we believe we've got sufficient funds to purchase the property. And given the unique sort of opportunity in time, we think there's an advantage to us owning that land, and then we can have, um, you know, map out where we go from there. We're not, we're not touching the current building now? No, we'd be, yeah. we'd own it, yeah. but oh. this, this isn't for that. Gotcha. Thanks. Okay. Um, so then just continuing sort of the theme here, I'm going to stop my share and then pull up another sheet and try not to give everybody whiplash with this. Um, so this sheet that I'm pulling up right now is just sort of the ARPA funding phase two portion. I can just share my screen here. Um, so this is just a, a, a quick kind of um, proposal to sort of identify what we would do with the other million or so that we're going to be receiving, but we haven't yet. And so this is we're really looking for a conversation around this, but we've also, you know, heard you and what you've said in previous conversations around ARPA and what you'd like it to go towards. Um, and so this first item is the community survey for about $25,000 or so. Um, and this, this survey would really kind of identify what the community priorities are in a sort of scientific not sort of it would be scientific and more robust way so that then we could really get at you know what those items are i know we've done this survey in the past and it was pretty impressive in terms of really being able to identify areas of vulnerability vulnerability words are heard um and you know so that's what we'd be aiming to do with this survey and really trying to identify and capture um, you know what the, the community is wanting, needing, um, trying to, to drive at some of those equity issues as well. Um, and then the next item is community outreach. Um, so it has been brought to our attention that you know we, we really need to focus on transparency and um, making sure that we can engage the community um, through leveraging technology. And so this um, is about fifty thousand dollars or so. Um, to work with um, maybe something like um, what I've got listed here. It's a Granicus product. It's called Bang the Table, um, kind of catchy. Um, and there's an example of Engage Missoula. And it, essentially what it is, is it just provides the platform for you to see what's really going on within the city at any given moment based on projects and things of that nature. Um, and it's, it's pretty neat. Um, it would be really neat for us to have. And I think with the ClearGov, um, budget book that we've put up there's also a transparency component to that as well um that's not as robust as this but is at least sort of part of the way there um and so this would maybe bring us a little bit further in that effort and really trying to leverage technology to get um the work of the city out there and then also to engage um, the community so we can get needs met um, and then this next one is the um, public restrooms and housing services hub item for $425,000. Um, so a, a portion of this is a placeholder value for a public restroom facility. And we would need to get into the planning on that. So this is um, preliminary. Um, and then the other sort of portion, whatever that's determined to be, would be for some of those hub support services for vulnerable populations. Um, and so that's based on categorical eligibility within the ARPA funding um, to help those impacted by COVID and really in need. Um, and then this last piece um, is an investment in um, water sewer infrastructure. The two infrastructure pieces that are allowed under ARPA are water sewer and broadband. We did look for those um, charging stations to see, you know, maybe possibly, but I, I don't think that that's would be sort of allowed as part of ARPA. So we would just have to figure out how to fit that in another way. And we can, 
um, do that. We haven't identified exactly where yet, but <laughs> we could get into that as well. Um, so this is just a, a quick list of you know what that second um, pot of ARPA money would look like. Um, and I can go back to the CAP summary sheet if there's more discussion that you want to have around the items on that list. Um, and then I've also got a few other sheets here, but they're mostly just for summary purposes to kind of touch up conversation. I can also bring up any of the budget book materials if you want to go through that. Um, totally up to you. Any questions that you want to dig into in this part? Go ahead, Donna. <laughs> well, um, I can't read it without my glasses, and oh. I can't put my glasses on without fogging up. So, Sorry. Uh, so it's my handicap here. But Don't the item under the housing and service hub and public bathrooms were separate items, but none of it was, I felt, priced out well, as well as they could be interrelated. So that was one change after the discussion with the CIP on Monday that the group agreed would be okay to combine them. And, and that's good to know we have that much resource to apply to this huge problem. And then we can define it as we move along. So I hope you'll feel comfortable with that. If I can have questions about it. If I can add on to that, one of the things that I had said in that meeting too was that, because originally we had had uh, like $100,000 dedicated to the um, uh, housing uh, and services hub, and I, I felt like that needed more uh, clarity or conversation. And, uh, you know, if we're going to spend $100,000 on something, I want to be able to say, like, this is what it is. <laughs> um, to be fair, I've, an alternative could be, uh, Maybe, maybe we don't know quite what it is, but we have a process that we believe we're going to go through to, um, to figure that out. And that, you know, I, I want to hear from other folks too about like, uh, you know, if, I mean, in this case, silence is, is like, yeah, this is fine. But um, at some point, uh, either, prob probably not tonight, but at a future meeting, if that stays in there, I think we should have a conversation about, uh, either what does that look like or what process do we want to get to a place where we understand what that looks like. Um, I'm seeing a lot of nods, so I'm hoping that that makes sense. But yeah, go ahead, Jay. Bill, why don't you oh. jump in? Go ahead. <laughs> well, I'll just add to that, and I appreciate that thought. But the other thing that's unique about this part of this piece that we're looking at is it's, you know, you know, three months into a fiscal year. Yeah. And so there isn't, with all of these things, it's, it's an infusion of capital, but, it's, but there isn't necessarily an associated plan to manage um, the human capital needed to implement. And so I think that that's also important. It's like, we can say like, hey, this is great. We can figure it out next September, but it would not be unrealistic for Bill and staff to say like, yeah, but we we don't we don't have the the capacity from a from a um, <clears throat> you know to, from a uh, from yeah. you know just from our staff to be able to implement these things. So I think that that's another piece of this that you know I, I do love the idea of saying like, hey, we can we can defer a few of these things and like yes, we'd love to you know implement the you know a new website that engages the engages the community and or deals with with public restrooms and housing services but if if there's not the, the the staff capacity to be able to implement them i think that that's part of what we need to be talking about here so if i could just weigh in on this um couple couple thoughts one is as far as the actual amount of money we we did have i think we had three hundred twenty-five thousand in for the bathroom um because that was i think we had some kind of ballpark price i can't remember where we got that and then the hundred thousand was really just an estimate. Obviously, um, I mean, we do need to invest in our water sewer infrastructure as well. But you know, the money could be shifted between there if we felt there needed to be more put into this area. Um, uh, so, to Jay's point, presumably part of the planning would be to see uh, if there was an agency we partnered with for, for these kind of services. And I, I would say, from the staff's perspective. 
the notion of a housing services hub scored really highly on your priorities, but we weren't 100% clear on what collectively people meant by that. And I know that question did come up in the capital, capital fund. So, you know, to the extent that you all meant the same thing or had different, <laughs> uh, you know, it would be good for us to A, settle on what the vision is, who might partners be, and then what the process might be to move that forward. But we also felt because it scored so highly, we needed to put some significant money in here to allow something to, to happen because clearly housing is an important issue in providing services. And yes, maybe it's a new building with a public restrooms in it. I, you know, I don't know. So um, I think there's a lot to be that we could talk about. Uh, Jennifer, go ahead. Um, so I'm just going to weigh in as a, I'm going to put my social worker hat on for a second. Um, you know, I, you all know I've been working with homeless people, communities, families, children for 20 years, and the infrastructure and the staffing is like such a huge piece. And I and I really hope that when when it comes to moving forward with any kind of housing services hub that the staffing get centered because you need to have staff that are going to be compassionate staying in their positions long term because a lot of these people are seeing new service providers over and over and over again it's really exhausting um <clears throat> yeah i i just i want to make sure that that piece having a building is important yes but also making sure that there that there's going to be a staff and um buy-in from the community long term because this is it, it's a hard it's a hard thing to to get started you know you can have the building and you can have all these great ideas but there's a lot of moving pieces and i just i want to make sure that this is lost <laughs> in the shuffle noted hmm. any other thoughts oh donna go ahead i just wanted to share i believe it was cameron who mentioned also we're getting a study done we've put out twenty five thousand dollars for a study is being done so that may give us a lot of information mm -hmm. about what's needed mm -hmm. and suggestions so mm -hmm. we're not trying to act in a vacuum mm -hmm. uh, we're reaching out for more information constantly and, and i'll just say this is a similar conversation that goes on in the homelessness task force <laughs> where you know everybody so, sort of has a different idea of what this thing looks like so uh the, the thought with that study is you know get all the information to try to put an intelligent proposal on the table and uh that there is a lot of conversation about staffing because it, it's huge, right? If you don't have a partner, it's just a just a building. It's mm. yeah. A lot of those agencies are strapped right now, as it is. So it seems like a. <clears throat> well, actually, do we, we haven't issued that that um, study yet, right? Like that hasn't gone out. Um, I mean, it might make some sense to. Um, just thinking out loud here, but uh, to wait until we get the results back from that before we assign. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Go ahead. And I think the uh, I think the task force is very receptive to the council helping set the parameters of what okay. that study looks like. I, I think they'd welcome it actually. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Worth conversation. Okay. Good to know. Uh, all right. Well. Um, further. Further thoughts on this? Yeah, Lauren, go ahead. Um, thank you for all that. That's really good context. Um, just, I guess I'm just a little confused. So are we putting out this survey together, community input, but like we've already decided where the money's going. So that's to inform future budgets and getting back to the process of doing community surveys. Like that's not intended to inform the ARPA dollars. It's just a community survey. It's to, okay. probably more informed community needs. You know, one of the nice things about the survey we did in 20, 2000. Me. Can you turn Bill up? I have a hard time hearing him. Sorry. Um, Thank you. One of the uh, one of the good things about the survey, you know, we did in 2009 and would like to repeat is that it gives us a lot of cross tabs on income, race, neighborhood, age. Uh, gender, all those sorts of things, so we can see, it gives us a good, you know, as we think about our social justice goals, the chance to see how, in a in a sort of scientific anonymous survey way, our services split out based on those cross tabs, and then we can better inform not only the investments we make in infrastructure, but our you know our direct services as well, um, based on those that feedback. 
Um, and those results were really interesting then. Um, then it'll be interesting to see if they've changed over time. That's great. I mean, I think I think doing that again it makes a lot of sense. And obviously, things have changed a lot since the last time we did this um, with the pandemic and everything. So, um, I guess just just one thought on this. I mean, I've definitely heard from some constituents asking to have some kind of public process around the ARPA funding that is um, not the like replacing what we had already committed to do as a community. So essentially, which is this, this batch. Top, right? <laughs> so um, I'm just you know curious. I don't know if others have heard that too, but if there's value, I mean, does this need to be tied timeline to the rest of the budget, or could we? Is there opportunity it to potentially? solicit some input. I mean, I like it could be a really like, how often do we are we able to like go to the community and be like, we've got a million dollars, like, let's have a <laughs> fun like, like, what what do we want to see out of it together? Like, it could be a good engagement. I know that was one of our goals. Um, you know, I mean, we have to obviously set really clear, like, you can only do certain things with it. And you know, all of that, like, you can't just do anything with it. There's, there's, um, so you the no, but, it is not does not have to be tied to the budget um we don't actually receive the money till september and then i think we have two years to spend it so there, there's no rush on it we wanted to outline this basically because we you know we're trying to address the needs we had on the table and that you had identified as priorities and given what we had for funding where else this was you know for example the social services hub in the bathroom this was an appropriate place to put that this was a good place to put some of the community engagement piece and really um you know we have a huge amount of water and sewer infrastructure. So we just left the, le you know, we sort of balanced it out. So, okay, half a million in water and sewer. So, you know, we could do that or we could put half a million dollars out, say we're going to spend this half a million this way and we can discuss the, you know, there's any number of ways the council could do it. We just wanted to allow you to see the whole package, uh, how they all work together before you proceeded, or how they could all work together. Let's put it that way. Any other thoughts on this section? Yeah. Just, so, I mean, obviously we've been talking about the public restroom. So like, I think that needs to be in the budget somewhere. Does, if we are putting it in this line item, does that mean it would not even be able to begin until the second um, slug of money comes in next fall? So we couldn't even begin construction if it's put here in the budget? I think we'd want to look at that. I think I, th I, I don't know. I mean, I think we could probably uh, probably borrow for it and pay it back with ARPA funds. I don't know how. I think it depends. Yeah, I, I think, think I think it's possible it could start ahead of time. You know, we, we you know that bills in law. We've received our first payment. Our confidence is a lot higher that we're going to get the money when scheduled and all that stuff. So I think we could start that earlier. I'd want to be sure, but I think I think that's right. I mean, I would rather have the money in hand. <laughs> that would make me feel a lot more comfortable. Um, but you know, we do have more assurances now that we'll get the money. You know what I mean? And we've already seen the first infusion, and we do have the guidance that we'll be getting it. You know, next fall, and so um, that's also not that far into fiscal twenty three. All things considered, I mean, a quarter, so it's still you know a little bit down the road, but. Um, you know, then also, I mean, thinking about developing plans for uh, for public facilities, I mean, they will take time and deliberations to sort of get all that off the ground. Um, so, you know, I think we could figure something out. But I, I don't think we're tied to waiting till mm -hmm. September to actually start constructing if we're ready to go earlier. Or as Kelly said, we could be ready to go as soon as the money comes in. Yeah, Jack, go ahead. Of this whole list, I really think the uh, public bathroom is uh, probably my number one priority beyond anything else. And <clears throat> I know we can always spend money on water and sewer infrastructure. The rest, and it's, I think I'm interested in seeing it fleshed out more before we're actually writing the check and buying stuff. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. 
So just to be clear, Jack, that that doesn't mean you want to take it out. No, I'm not saying take it out. And right. uh, but you know, as as you suggested at some upcoming meeting, having more of a discussion about what the housing services hub means, because um, right. I don't really know what it means. Um, yeah. So I hope I'm not someone who put one of my dots on that because. I, <laughs> Because I don't really know what it means, but I was, I was just at a meeting last week, a mental health meeting, and uh, people mentioned staffing uh, across the state right now in the community mental health centers. There are about nine hundred vacancies. So, staffing is a huge, huge issue. <laughs> yeah. Any other thoughts on this section? Okay. Okay. So the next thing to do um, here is I would probably pull up the budget options worksheet so you can kind of see in summary, you know, what the budget generally looks like. And then there are some items that um, have come in from groups that we might, you know, mention to you so that they're sort of out there on the table. If you were so inclined to add them in, um, then, you know, we, we could do that in real time. Um, so let me just see if I can. So while you're pulling that up, because I think this is a, a good point or a good place to transition back to a sort of a full discussion, and, and maybe we can is there, can you turn the lights back on? Awesome, thank you. Um, hopefully we can still see this somewhat, or we can turn the back off if we we need to. But um, yeah, so what's that? Sure that's oh, is it not sharing? Sure. Didn't think so. Well, actually, I wasn't sure, and I was going to wait and see. What yeah. I was going to try my luck here. Sorry about that. Yeah. So um, I'm hoping that we can go around. Um, now, I, I did have the thought of, uh, you know, if if we do go around, it's possible that you know someone might have a lot of questions, and we just d dig into that, and we don't end up getting all the way around. So I guess I would ask if you have a lot of questions, maybe just tell us like the big topics. Um, and let, we can see if there's some shared um, concern about things. But I do want to get to all of them. I also just want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to share, um, just recognizing that we're at like 7.30 um, right now. So um, with that in mind, um, because I, I'll just say for myself, like I have uh, questions about the budget in general that I want to ask. There are some things that I might suggest. Um, I don't have, uh, I'll just speak for myself, I don't have anything I want to take away, but um, I also want to, you know, make sure everybody, like I said, has a chance to share. So, um, yes. I will start by saying I have nothing okay. to say because this is my first budget. So Fair enough. Well, we still want your opinion <laughs> about all the things. So. <laughs> Fair enough, right? Like, I have nothing to compare it to. So, the <laughs> well, I, I think that hopefully also speaks to that. You know, it, uh, what we've been presented with is uh, at, at least mostly uh, like reflective of uh, of our goals as a council, and that's uh, I think a great place to start. It's very encouraging. I'm very grateful for the work that you all have done so far, uh, and along with the staff. So also please pass that along to to the rest of the staff for us. And Kelly, before you start talking about this, if you could uh, blow this up a little bit, that would be helpful to me at least. Um, so who would like to start? Jennifer already started. Oh, that's true. Jennifer did start. Um, you know, so actually, before maybe before we get rolling too much further, I do want to um, point out just a couple of things that I saw from the budget survey that you all filled out. Thank you for doing that. Um, of uh, this group, uh, three of us said that we thought the budget should increase by uh, either COLA or CPI. That's somewhere between 4.4 and 5.9%. And this, what we are starting with here is in that range. Uh, two folks said uh, we need to uh, catch up from uh, previous cuts. Uh, uh, therefore, we need uh, a percent increase over that. And some folks said, or two, two folks said um, some services should be expanded while others should be cut. It just depends. 
Uh, so just wanted to make sure we have that kind of in mind because any suggestions that we make, obviously, if we are going to add them, they'll they'll impact um, the bottom line. I just wanted folks to know sort of where we um, where we were at to start with. So other thoughts? Yes, Jack, go ahead. I have one very tiny thing. If it's not if this isn't the place to uh, do it, tell me. But uh, in the budget book, there's a on page 12, there's a listing of restoring $110,000 for the housing task force should be housing trust fund. Oh. We've got all these things that have the same initials. We have housing task force, housing trust fund, homelessness task force. Yeah, so, yeah, right. <laughs> right. Thank you for knowing anyway. that I can make that change. There are questions or suggestions people have. Yeah, go ahead, Jack. Again, working from my notes from the budget book on page uh, 29 in the revenue summary, um, we're listing a 56.3% increase in the state payment in lieu of taxes. Is that a temporary COVID uh, add-on? Is it? Are we getting it in the future years? Do we know? Well, actually, it's a Last year we had a temper. We estimated a significant reduction in that because of COVID, and it didn't happen. We actually got the full amount, so we're back to budgeting what we actually cool. received last year. Great. So it's it's more a return to normal as opposed. And, and last year's was a, a low, an estimated low that didn't turn out to. So it was a windfall for us this past year. Oh, that's good. So we don't need to be thinking. Well, if we spend this money next year, we're gonna. Right. Have a hang on and next year receiving this amount. Okay, yes. thanks. Great. Uh, Connor, go ahead. Yeah, just a couple of quick ones. Uh, my recollection economic development, we're sending the $50,000 aside. Could spend it on a project. I know there's some creative ideas kicking in the community, but the thought is we'll probably spend it and we'll have a discussion at a later time for the 50000 So, So, specifically, um, had two things in mind. Um, although we could reshape that, um, and, and we had a lot. So, so let me just take a little step back. We had a lot of, you know, obviously MDC went away. We didn't have any money in this budget, so it gave us some time to think about it. We talked, you know, should we propose a position? You know, what should we do? And one of the things that um, Mike Miller, uh, I think, aptly pointed out was that the Economic Development Strategic Plan, which was the basis for formation for MDC, and sort of laid out. Our, our goals and aspirations. You know, it's a few years old now, and um, you know, one of its key initiatives, you know, was sort of a hotel and parking structure in the center of town. It was one of the things that drove that um, that project, and uh, you know, and, and a lot's changed. We've had COVID, um, so we thought we should have funding in the budget to update that plan to. To reflect today's reality and today's priorities and that involves meeting with a lot of stakeholders in the community and getting a sense of where those economic development priorities are and it was that last plan that recommended creating a nonprofit corporation and so hopefully this plan would recommend some way of moving forward be it staffing or whatever we think that might be about twenty five thousand. the remaining twenty five thousand is i would like to, us to keep that um, because what that really means is that then we will be doing economic, I will be mostly uh, doing it, but with Cameron's help and our staff's help. And there are times when I need technical assistance like White and Burke or people particularly for using TIF, but even other development consultants. So the idea would be that would be for us to tap into on an as needed basis as opportunities come up. As we're working with Sabin's Pasture Development, I've been using them and, you know, they're not free. So. I would just say like, uh, you know, I know like Dan Jones, for example, he's met with like 80 people in town and kind of had, to, had this concept of a economic round table, you know, and not totally dissimilar than the first one, I think. So, I, you know, I, I would like to give him a day in court to actually like pitch this and if it's a good idea, you know, maybe go with some of the ideas there. I don't, I don't know if it's the full kid and caboodle, but I just like to, personally, I would like to have that in the mix uh, for a future conversation. And I don't know if that's part of the money or if I should put, propose a bit more on top of that. So. 
I don't, I don't know what the idea is, so I don't know how much money it is. So. <laughs> we, <laughs> we can pass you his emails. Go ahead, Donna. Uh, likewise, I was thinking that maybe part of that money would it be applied to whatever we want to do with, I'm going to call it the Elks Club plan, that we actually look at it in a more holistic way than just our little presentation we had from the, the hub group. Do you mean like for other uses or? Well, I mean, no, it's using this 50,000 economic development. To, again, you might pull in expertise from people, but you, you, that could be part of our economic development plan is including that land purchase and what we do with it and how we incorporate mm. partners and a regional mindset. So I, I, sorry, I have more questions. Are you thinking of like uh, economic development because we've, we've had this long conversation previously about outdoor recreation as being economic development. Is that sort of where yes. you're going with that thought? Okay. Yes. Got yes. You. Okay. As well as more rec services. Right. right. So yeah. I, and I think for, so from our perspective, pursuing the purchase of the land was to try to further that goal of more rec services and, yeah. and the outdoor recreation as economic development. I, I mean, we, we will at some point need planning money, um, and depending on the cost of the land, we there is some money, as I said, rec has some set aside for, for planning for facilities. Um, and obviously, if we build things there, we're going to have to come back and get money for that. Um, so, I mean, th honestly, this really wasn't intended to be used for planning for recs and park. This was really meant to be sort of for business expansion and to to update our economy. You know, and maybe we'll learn as part of that plan that. That's that's important, uh, and then to assist us on actual economic development projects where we need professional help. Um, so I, I would not have envisioned this to be used for sort of a rec and parks planning. Yeah, I understand it's undefined. I guess I just want to slip that idea in there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I feel like um, it's really great being part of the CIP. And anytime you should join that discussion just to hear all this information more than once. Uh, and I really appreciate how much the staff has responded to the input we've given them, including that $425,000, the housing service hub uh, and restrooms. I have one thing that I think you, you might want to consider adding because the public, uh, Central Vermont Public Safety Authority Board voted to potentially put uh, $30,000 on the Barry Montpelier ballot. For Montpelier, that would be a share of 14100 max share uh, the the budget for the public safety authority this like this one is going through lots of changes we have a meeting this coming monday we have our final one hopefully it will be the january 13th but uh, i'll keep you posted but i'll just give you a heads up on that otherwise uh, i really i i like where we're at and may make some changes but i feel it's a good good first pass through so just so I'm clear, so you all voted to uh, to do this, right? So I'm guessing, I guess what I'm saying is we don't, because we don't have a say in that, right? Like no, that's it's like the library, right? Right. It's just it's coming. <laughs> okay. Um, so and I'm just trying to think of like historically, have we included that in our estimation of what our budget is? I feel yes. like we 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 haven't, other than we've included it because it is part of the total. I mean, we right, you know okay. to the extent that we want to yeah. know what taxpayers are facing yeah. we've, we've certainly included as our planning we like like with the library and others we've said you know here's what the city's proposing here's what others are proposing right. but at the end of the day it's still part of the bottom line got you okay and the funds he put in the budget were the fy20 the 235 <laughs> oh the because it's already listed in there oh right i see because right, CVC, CVPSA ballot is listed under as twenty three five, so we could put it in as fourteen ten one hundred because we know. Yeah. Uh, okay. That's where it's just at. for a point of clarity. That's like a, a carryover from a prior year, so it's not actually in the budget for this year. Um, you can see that it was and, dashed. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I just there. was trying to explain where the prior year yeah, number sure. came Perfect. from, so it, but we didn't get it the last year either. Right. It's been two years. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's good to know that we can fill that in. <laughs> um, I have other thoughts, but yeah, go ahead, Lauren. Yeah, thanks. A um, couple thoughts. Um, I mean, overall, I also think this is a really good budget. I, I think it was really 
responsive to the strategic plan. I am really excited to see fully staffed departments and that, um, you know, getting back to the types of quality of service that, you know, the community needs and expects and all of that. Um, a couple thoughts. Um, one, there was a request that was in everyone's inbox today from the Social and Economic Justice Advisory Committee to consider a line item for stipends for um, service on city committees. Um, this is a big equity issue who can actually participate and because we are so um, reliant on volunteers to do so much amazing work for our community. Um, the, it's a line item. The request was for 42,000. Um, there is an expectation that probably that full amount would not be spent. Um, you want to be able to make it available to everyone, but from experience with other committees, not everybody takes it just because it's available. So I think, you know, obviously we would need to budget the full amount and, um, but there would be an expectation. Um, so I, that was one of the things in our equity assessment um, from creative discourse that was a recommendation. So I wanted to put that out there uh, for consideration. Um, another was, um, from Kate Stevenson from the Energy Advisory Committee had um, urged us to consider funding an energy and sustainability position. Um, there's been some great experience in other communities um, like Hartford, Vermont, where they hired an energy coordinator and that person was able to um, make up their salary in seven months on the job by identifying efficiencies um, that they were able to secure, I think, uh, even just watching, you know, knowing we've got our net zero plan to implement um, things like district heat, where we've seen both challenges um, and opportunities where if somebody was able to focus on it more fully and try to bring more customers on and there were efficiency projects identified um, that people were able to install addressing some of the concerns. And I think if somebody was more proactively seeking out those kinds of opportunities um, and just knowing we've got the climate action plan the state just adopted a huge slew of state programs coming online um, you know state arpa dollars uh, state infrastructure dollars for like ev charging stations is there's 21 million for vermont for that like being able to make sure that we're taking full advantage i think like it's a time where we would be able to reap rewards from having someone focused on this for the community so i wanted to put that on the table um one other i was this is more of a question. So the peer outreach workers that the uh, police review committee had recommended, the, so the budget reflects more social worker um, FTEs, but not So there was a total outreach. of 1.5 for peer and social, and we've increased 1.5 for the social worker portion. Um, so there's another 1.0. I guess half for a social worker and 0.5 for a peer that is not yet funded. Um, the peer social worker, that's essentially what the, so what, at least what we currently have is what's funded with the uh, homelessness task force. We're paying for that service. So, and that was really just trying to stay within, you know, yeah. trying to expand some, yeah. get all the positions back and yeah. gotcha. stay within our line. Um, yeah, I mean, Thanks. Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, we had identified it in that committee as a, a priority and, you know, to the conversation earlier about staffing and addressing these issues. Um, you know, I think just, so I, just I looking would, at that. Yeah. Yeah. A, and we did, you know, just to be clear, we also did include the body worn cameras and yep. most of as virtually all of the recommendations are funded within the department operating budget. So that's, that's the one thing that we probably yeah. we thought, well, maybe we can get that one next year, those, yeah. that piece. So it gotcha. wasn't that we ignored the committee. It was just yeah. that was. Yeah, appreciate <laughs> appreciate that. Um, Sorry, can I follow up on that one? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're assuming, I guess, the uh, legislature is probably not going to fund a half position again for the social worker. We don't know, so. Nothing like that. So our budget, Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong, but our budget assumed that the, so right now we split a half position with Barry and we pay a third, the state pays a third and Barry pays a third. So we assumed that would stay in place. 
and that we would then fund a full ha other half of another position, whether it was the same person or not, um, with no state funding. I also have a follow up question on that. <laughs> Sorry, if, if that's okay. Um, and actually, this is a question for uh, Chief Pete, who I see is on. Um, I just wanted to check in uh, about the the shared uh, social worker. Um, you know, I, I see it posted uh, in the weekly notes uh, every week that this person is available. And I am just curious. I, I mean, I, I hope that residents, uh, folks in Montpelier are accessing this person. Um, but I just wanted to confirm, you know, before, uh, I, I do know it was a part of the recommendation of the police review committee, but I just wanted to confirm um, that, you know, this person is being uh, well used uh, by Montpelier residents. Yes, ma'am. The shorter answer to that one is a definite yes. <laughs> Uh, I can, in, in continuing on with that, Susan is. Um, I think so too. Is she? There's a lot of overlap. Oh, between, okay. Oh. I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, there's a lot of overlap between the folks that are in need of hold, service. Hold on a barely. second. We're hopefully going to be able to hear you soon. Actually, I'm trying to get into the Zoom. Oh, the mouse is not. <laughs> uh, simplest volume on the speaker. Maybe. Chief, can you try saying a, a couple things? Yes, ma'am. Are, are you able to hear me? Okay, we still can't hear you. Yeah, I need to get into the. Can we uh, hear anybody Zoom else? Is it just Brian or? I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I, I hear him yeah, coming out of. We can hear him fine. What did, can I ask a question? Sure, go ahead. Too. Uh, when Lauren mentioned the energy position, I thought we approved one that just hadn't been filled because we reduced our budget. We had approved one a couple of years ago and filled it, a, we didn't fill it as that. We used the funds differently and attempted to get at the situation differently. And it's been with mixed success. So it's not considered an unfilled position, it's just no. gone? No. Was, so we have to reinstate it? We'd have to put funding in for it. Okay. How are we doing? Still working on it? Oh yeah, go ahead, Chief. Uh, Good, good evening, ma'am. Yes, oh, we can hear you. That's wonderful. Okay. <laughs> All right, right on. <laughs> uh, good evening, uh, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, uh, City Manager Frazier, uh, City Manager Niedermeyer. Uh, the, the short answer to that question is a definite yes. Um, Susan has uh, been extraordinarily, she's been a foundation and a rock into what we're trying to do regarding 21st century policing and service to the community and bridging that access to um, resources within the Washington County area with folks who are in most need of them. So yes, Susan has been a phenomenal part of that, a uh, phenomenal partner with Washington County Mental, uh, Mental Health Services. In addition to that, um, even though Susan is spending, is sharing her time between um, Montpelier and Barrie, a lot of the folks who are in need of these services often do visit both twin cities. So um, it, it's just been nothing but great cooperation. So. Uh, the answer to that question is a definite yes, ma'am. That is fantastic. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, okay, sorry. And I think I had interrupted you, Lauren. On <laughs> If you have more, I want to turn it back over to you. Thank you. No, I mean, the only other thing I think gets more to the capital discussion we were having, just just thinking about how our budget can be responsive to opportunities that might come up as we learn about like state dollars or federal dollars that are flowing to the state. Like for example, the um, you know there's a line item about PFAS contamination at wastewater treatment facilities. Like if we realize where we could put filtration in and we could get that federally funded, I just like how 
I don't know what we need in our budget now to make sure that we could be responsive to opportunities. Um, so I don't know if there's a portion either if, it, if it's that 500,000 of the ARPA funds or you know something that would give us matching ability, for example. Um, I know there's a bill that's going in this year about municipal energy efficiency projects and how they want to make a really generous state match to help cities do a lot of efficiency projects, for example. So if that moves and becomes available for the next fiscal year, just so just would you know welcome any thinking on, on how to actually structure that but i would love to be ready to take as much advantage um, of those kinds of things that i think could be online by the fiscal year budget that we're talking about so the short answer to that is um really any of those funds that we've identified could be reallocated um if we had you know if we reprioritized an opportunity at any time we could say hey you know we're not gonna you know buy this truck or pave this road or do whatever. I mean, the, you know, we'd have to have a conversation about what that means, but we could all, you know, it might, if clearly if we're gonna leverage a higher priority project like PFAS or something, then I would say, sure, let's reallocate. And I mean, again, the council really appropriates the money and the general purposes, the voters just allocate the money and then we manage it over the course of the year with in conjunction with you. So we can, you know, I think we can be as responsive as we need to be. Great. Now go ahead, Donna. Uh, Lauren, um, I, I just recently, I get some emails from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission when they know a grant's coming up. You seem to be in that groove. <laughs> Do you notify PDW? Hey, I heard about this. Um, is she a conduit for us? Because mm -hmm. the staff is good when on jumping on opportunity when they know. So maybe you could be our point person. <laughs> <laughs> New job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, you, just great, great. You're in the know. Well, she does, and VLCT does, and CVB, our CVRPC does, and our own staff tracks these things as well. So, um, but yeah, Lauren has always been very helpful at pointing these out. Um, I just want to um, point out. Uh, I know Vicky has had her hand up, and I, I just want to acknowledge that this is a uh, a workshop time. Um, so, Vicky, I just wanted to let you know that we're, we're prioritizing our, the council discussion at this point, and we'll have a public hearing on this. Uh, at I think it's our next meeting. Um, it's either actually well, the public uh, hearings aren't until in, January. in January. Okay. Um, but uh, anyway, so we're going to prioritize our, our discussion for now, but um, uh, we'll, we'll check in again at the, um, at the end, uh, if, you're, if you're still here. Um, anyway, just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, all right, so other, uh, yes, go ahead, Connor. So, perennial proposal. Uh, from me, but uh, <laughs> I, I uh, you know, I think we have a good legislative agenda. Um, I think there's a ton of opportunities to draw down federal money. I, I think there's a bunch of things to track, whether it be rivers or PFAS or public restrooms and institutions, uh, public safety uh, stuff with like the social worker. Um, I really think $15,000 would be well spent contracting with a lobbying firm uh, in town here who would have a point person. These firms have someone sitting in the appropriations committee, institution committees monitoring the appropriations bills, the capital bills, any opportunities for grants that come down that we just miss, you know, we, like we, we don't know what we need because we, we just don't know, you know. Um, so I, I, I think $15,000 would pay for itself. I'd even be willing to take $2,000 from the legislative wel welcome reception for it, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I, I think we have enough cooking up at the dome and enough potential for federal funds being drawn down. Uh, there, there, there could be some huge potential there. We just can't cover it. We, just, we don't have the staff. We're volunteers, you know? It's, so I'd like to propose uh, $15,000 yeah. for a lobbyist. Yeah. <laughs> I, so in my mind right now, we're just sort of collecting all the ideas and then we can sure. sort of hash them out further. Is that okay? Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, other thoughts, Jack? Are you interested in just sort of high level thoughts of the budget as yeah. a whole at this point because that's fine i i agree with uh with i guess lauren and uh and donna that uh, you know i'm not ready right now to say yes i vote to put this out to the voters the way it is but i i think it's uh very encouraging uh that we 
look like we can pro propose a very uh, responsible budget with uh, that addresses most of the really important things that we've been talking about doing. And looking at some of the big items we have on here, I'm very pleased that we're finally going to get to fixing the elevator at City Hall, which is uh, has been a, a looming problem and uh, threat for a long time. Uh, the main Barry intersection, again, is something uh, that we've needed to do for years. The uh, putting a really healthy amount of money into road uh, maintenance and improvement, because that is, I think, for all of us, it's probably the number number one complaint we hear from constituents. Um, so, so I think there's a lot of uh, of really good things here. Um, there are some things that I about the future that I either think about or worry about that I think it's uh, I'd like to see if we can explore a little bit. One of them is uh, where the state is on uh, on bringing workers back because that's going to have a tremendous impact on uh, the parking fund and on the uh, rooms and meals tax. Although I have noticed that lately as I'm driving through downtown, most of the parking spaces are full. It's, it's obvious that there are more people working or coming downtown and parking uh, than there were back when things were, back when we thought things were really bad, when they were not actually not nearly as bad as they are now, <laughs> but uh, but so that's a real real question for for the city for the future. Um, another thing that I is more of a a worry than in anything else is the uh, is the upcoming uh, reappraisal, and uh, and the biggest question to me, and I know, you know having been on the uh, Board of Civil Authority and Board of Abatement for many, many years, I know how it all works and that people are always afraid that if their appraisal goes up, the assessment goes up, that means their taxes are going to go up and that's not necessarily true. But um, I think the pattern is also has also been for some time that uh, each time we do a uh, townwide reassessment, there's a shift from um, in the tax burden from the commercial to the uh, residential sector. And so that's something that uh, is going to have an impact on on residents. And uh, so as we think about what the burden is on our taxpayers, that's something to always uh, keep in mind. Um, I have a couple, there are a couple of tiny things that uh, one is a is a big uh, thumbs up, and the other is a question. The big the big yes is, it's great to see money in the budget this year for the Independence Day celebration. <laughs> Obviously, that's going to depend on how things go in next year, but I think people will be very very happy if we can have a parade and have the celebration on on the. State House law next year. Um, another even tinier thing, but it was the last year or two years ago, this got uh, a much uh, bigger and more heated uh, debate than we might have expected. And that's the uh, line 34, the $1,000 for the USS Montpelier. Um, and when the last time we had this debate where some people were saying take it out because it saves us a thousand dollars and other people really wanted to keep it in it's only a thousand dollars and a very big budget but uh, it is one of those things that uh, to me embodies kind of uh, kind of a cultural divide in the city and so uh, so I think it, if, if someone knows something about how that happened, I think it's, it's worth having that discussion because it's, it's likely to come up and be, be a discussion again. 
Oh, and I had one other thing, uh, if, uh, Chief Pete, if you're still here. Uh, on page 20, 122 of the book, or uh, the appropriation for, uh, or 126, the appropriation for uh, body cameras, which I strongly support. Am I right in thinking that there's no uh, personnel cost uh, associated with that? Or we we planning on having to hire anyone or you're just absorbing that? I'm, I'm sorry, sir, which uh, my, my, my sound is going in and out. Which which line item is that one, sir? Um, the uh, the body cams. Um, are, are, is, is it going to cost us? Are we going to be paying someone to be uh, reviewing the video, responding to uh, public records request, and is that going to be a cost that uh, that we're not seeing reflected in the proposed budget? We did take that into account, sir, and I think um, what we'd like to do is we're still trying to draw numbers and um, making sure that we collect accurate numbers regarding public records requests. And so I think for right now, and, and then based on the, what the software platform can do regarding redactions, uh, I think right now it'd be, be more prudent to take a wait and see approach um, before we could uh, come close to entertaining uh, hiring an administrative person to help us in dealing with those types of public re records requests. They will significantly, they, they, I'm anticipating they will add to the public records requests we already get, but I don't know how much at this point. Thanks. Also, Chief, big thumbs up on. Uh, Chipping away at the vacancies in your department, I think it's uh, it's great that uh, that we're getting those down, hiring uh, people to replace the they could fill the vacancies that we had. Thank you, sir. It's all up to it's all the officers. Um, they're they're going out there and looking for folks that they'd like to work. That's great. Um, anything else, Jack? That is it for now. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Um, well, I may share some of my thoughts. Um, uh, I, I realize we talked about this already, but just in terms of uh, potential charging station and electric truck uh, that we had talked about at the uh, Capital Improvements Committee, that uh, is now the thought is that that will be in the water budget. Is that Correct. The truck will definitely be there. Truck. So we already have the, okay. the trucks in the water and right, sewer budget. Right. So we'll just adjust the price of one okay. of those, or or maybe just wait and see. What and the is. charging station. The charging is, station. Is, we got to figure out where to put it. Okay. So that will either be an add or a shift. Right. Probably not an add. It'll and just to be clear, them. we we vote on the water budget at a different time. Correct. Um, so so the, the charging station may not be in the water budget because it will probably would be used by not just that truck. Right. So yeah, that would make sense. Have, so we'll have to figure that out. Yep, okay. Um, great. Uh, I So Lauren, thank you for bringing up uh, the uh, stipends for other city committees. That's something that I'm interested in. Uh, and and also the energy co coordinator position. I think we need to see like, well, so how much um, would that cost? And um, I think there's uh, some really interesting uh, potential there, uh, and at least in terms of the the stipends for city appointees, going slightly back a topic, uh, the proposal that we got from the social and economic justice uh, committee was recommending um, a process where people could apply, for, so everyone wouldn't necessarily just get um, funding, uh, but the, but people could uh, apply for. Uh, uh, Fifty dollars, and I asked where that had come from. And that was the recommendation from Creative Discourse um, that that was the amount uh, to start with, because I was curious where that amount came from, uh, and that that you know I, I think is fine, particularly that it came from Creative Discourse. Uh, if there's some kind of application process, I think we probably would need to flesh that out. What does that look like? what would be the basis for somebody getting it or not getting it? I don't know. Yes, go ahead. Um, so the way we've talked about it is it basically the reason the line item is what it is, is because if we're going to make it available, it should be available to everyone. Yeah. But then it would be essentially an opt-in thing. So not everybody would opt in and take it. Um, 
what we're hoping to do is um, the city of Essex in Vermont is implementing this starting in January. So by the time this would come online here, we're hoping to look at the program they've built and take lessons learned and have you know the details of like how do we make this work because you know there's considerations of like you want to make it not feel like something people don't want to take or you know you want it truly to be accessible and so just the way you structure how it's um, yeah. provided and how people are made aware of it and is it um, is it working and look at the amount that they offer and stuff so I think we could refine um, the implementation plan um, over the coming months um, but this was like the baseline of you know getting the amount and the budget so that we could then figure out the structure of how exactly to offer it in a way that is going to, you know, make these committees more accessible. And they had suggested um, a, to start this as a pilot with a handful of committees. And uh, I would um, uh, be open to talking about if we do go forward with this, uh, are those the right committees? Um, I I would have um, prioritized uh, providing stipends to committees that the city has to have. Um, for example, the DRB and the Planning Commission. I know the Planning Commission was already on their list, but the DRB wasn't. Um, but we we have to have those groups. Um, so that's where where I would start, um, and then you know go out from there. Uh, potentially also the Design Review Committee. You know these sort of um, ones that are uh, where we we sort of are expected to have them and uh, we don't really have flexibility on, as to like the number of seats that uh, that are on these boards. Anyway, we can have further conversation about that. Um, and I think that is it for me for now. So um, a lot of a lot of repeats yeah. there. Yeah, Donna, go ahead. I, I guess I would hope the stipend would really help someone pay for a babysitter. And if they're only getting $50, so is it not equitable just to say there has to be an express need? Uh, otherwise, to me, $50 won't allow a parent with young kids to come. It's almost not useful. Yeah. Uh, so help me understand why it has to be available, not on need, but to everybody. Uh, I don't see how we can afford it <laughs> and, and help people meet the real need to pay their sitter so they can come. So just to make sure I'm understanding the question right, like potentially we could make a larger amount available to fewer people to make sure that you're actually making it like if someone had to hire a babysitter and it cost more than $50, for example, I guess I just want to make sure I understand your question. Babysitting for $50. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, essentially, this will be based on need and that people will say, like essentially sign up for it saying yes this is something that um i plan to take advantage of so that so that it allows me to serve on the committee um and what we've seen in other the examples that were brought to the um, social and economic justice committee are you know there's state committees are starting to do this more where they're giving some more generous stipends and um, like the climate council just offered um, similar stipends and very few people actually ended up taking them, but it was it was available and it did allow some people to participate that um, would have found it a burden otherwise. Um, so, you know, because this, this is kind of a standard amount is what we found, I think by doing it as a pilot, the idea was we could learn some of this is it actually bringing in new people that are able to participate is is it the right amount? Is it being offered in a way that people can take advantage of it? Is it, you know, are people who have served for years taking it that it seems like, is this changing the, you know, who's able to participate? So I think that's the kind of lessons that we would hope to learn. Um, but this is a pretty standard from the research we did in terms of amount and the kind of approach and structure. And I don't know if and I think Cameron to be clear, or others have more to add. It's $50 per meeting. Yeah. It's not just fifty dollars flat to be on the committee. It's fifty dollars per meeting. Okay. So you could probably get a babysitter for one meeting for fifty dollars. Yes. And yes. then every. Yeah, I didn't. I I'm I'm not finding the auditory working very. Sorry, much for me. it's fifty dollars yeah, per meeting. That. Thank you. Thank you. I, That's I, what I, I just I read I, it. I'm I when I feel like what we get 
Uh, and, and maybe we have to do that and say, do I really need this? Mm. Um, but I'm really wanting to focus what little funds we have to get that diversity we're not getting because of financial difficulties and not necessarily everybody getting it. So that's where I'm at. And maybe that's not legal. I don't know. That's what I was trying to ask you. Uh, that would be my preference is that it really goes where it's needed to get our diversity that we need. So I, I, this is clearly a policy question and however you want to handle this is fine. <laughs> I guess I would say from an administrative perspective, um, if we get into means testing and uh, need based, then someone has to make a determination of that. Yeah. And that means someone has to review. Um, so I don't, we don't have the ability to do that, nor would I want to get into having people have to submit their financial standing uh, to us. To, uh, I think it would just have to be, I think it would work most efficiently if you just you know, put it out there and people could choose to take it or not. And um, you're right, some people who don't need it might take it, but that's the way it goes. Uh, Jack, go ahead. I would be surprised if, uh, if these are the boards that we use or something like that, I would be surprised if we spend half of this money which is not an argument for not doing it necessarily, but I uh, I suspect that most people, for instance, we don't have 15 people on the housing task force. Uh, I'm not sure how many we do have, but I think that most people would not um, take the money, and I wouldn't want to put someone who needs the money in the position of having to justify it. I so that's that's my thinking. Other thoughts? Yeah, Connor. Are, like, are we waiting? Like, sure, yeah, on? sure. Yeah, no, I, like, I don't know what form it looks like. I don't know how much money, but pretty much the social justice committee, we hired this consultant. They came in, they gave us all this data. And it looks like this is like the only thing they're asking for. And it's substantial, of course. But I, I think, you know, if we do these things, like have a report come out, it's got to be more than just sort of admiring it for a couple hours. Uh, we got to follow through with some action steps whether it's a lean year or not, because, you know, social and economic justice, I think goes beyond that. So I would definitely, th I think we have a week to like, maybe flesh it out, kick some ideas around, what committees are relevant, how much money is it? Uh, but I'd like, I'd love to see it in some form. Cool. All right, other thoughts? Yeah, Jay. General budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not Great. Okay. Perfect. Um, well, I, I just want to say that I certainly appreciate everybody's um, thoughts. I've had lots of notes and I was happy to cross most of them off because you <laughs> folks have covered them and, and I appreciate that. But just there's two things that I want to come back to and I'm not, it's just more about thinking about how we approach this, not necessarily making a specific um, proposal. But first, um, I, I think it's really important that we acknowledge um, the opportunity and responsibility around the potential of asking for a one and a half million dollar bond item to purchase the golf course land um, one i think it's incredible opportunity we live in a river valley there is not much open space certainly very very little flat space not that that's totally flat but it's like kind of getting there right um, but it's 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 manageable it's space that can be used for a lot of different purposes um, so I think be, the opportunity to be able to buy that property is, um, the timing is, is dare I say, generational. It, does, it just doesn't come up very often, and I think that that's something that we should really um, take seriously um, and, um, you know, engage with the community about how important this, you know, how unique this opportunity is. At the same time, I also want to acknowledge that um, owning that land comes with it like a really big responsibility in terms of how it could potentially be developed or not. And there are lots of organizations and folks that would love to take advantage of what we could do there, whether it's the folks from the hub, whether it's, you know, outdoor groups, it's tennis players, soccer players, I mean, you know, cross country skiers, I go on and on and on and on. So I think that acknowledging that that 
if, if we're to do if you know we we're to move forward with that then i think we need to be diligent and smart about um and at least allocating resources to develop a plan to make it so that it could benefit the um community as best as possible i don't want to be in a situation where if we if we bond and buy the land then it's just sort of like well whoever shows up can just do with mm -hmm. it that they want um i just don't i don't think that that would be fair but at the same time it really is a, an incredible opportunity um and then the other piece um and this ties back a little bit to what donna was talking about is around economic development um and again i don't necessarily have a specific proposal here but um I do think that we we need to invest some money to update the plan that was done a few years ago. Um, uh, a lot has changed. The world is very different based on what the recommendations they gave us were. And I think that if we were to try to implement those recommendations now, they wouldn't get very far um, for a lot of reasons. And so I think investing in that um, does make a lot of sense. But I, at the same time, I'm worried that I just want to acknowledge that I think it would um, you know, if, if there was money available, like Bill, like you said, that like, hey, yeah, I could do, you know, if something comes to me, then I could, you know, be able to hire White and Burke or a consultant or somebody to help see it through. I think that's all well and good, but at the same time, I feel like there's an opportunity. To, that's not a proactive stance. That's very much a passive stance. And and Lord knows you have you have you have enough to do. Cameron, the staff, everybody has enough to do. So I. I, I I wonder if we should give some more thought to could 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 the city be in a position where we could um, take a more proactive stance around economic development financially or what that would look like and what sort of investment that would take. Like I said, I don't necessarily have a specific proposal right now, but I do think that um, it would behoove us. And I think that this you know this is where you get into a a, a lot of you know gray area, but talking about outdoor recreation and um, recreational opportunities and parks department and our recs department and, and, and the property, you know, that we could potentially bond for. And then also looking at the other side of that, looking at downtown and being proactive around economic development. Um, I think that, that, you know, we're in a place where that could be, the return on investment could be significant if we were to um, take a more proactive stance on that. So. Well, I, I mean, that's where I'd like us to be, um, especially if they could do um, energy work. Uh, <laughs> We've already tried to combine that yeah, with yeah. something else. <laughs> um, can't combine it all. Yeah. Can't combine. Can't combine. Uh, combine. I, and I just I think we would be more at the the you know the hundred thousand that we were at before when you start talking about a staff person benefits some operating funds. I think that's really where we'd be and. That's where we started with the budget was to try to put that in and you know as we tried to weigh the various priorities and get everything in and stay where where we ended up with the level um some you know some things just didn't make it and that was when we said well let's do this that's that keeps us moving forward but um it doesn't you know we didn't want to zero it either um but i think i think regardless of how it looks i think we're going to be at that hundred thousand dollar level to really do it right um, and you know i'd be happy to do it faster well and that's something that we could talk about you know increasing that amount potentially sorry i don't want to cut you off if there's more no, 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 I appreciate okay. That. okay all right well um jack before you go i just want to acknowledge that it is just about 8 30. um that was the first thing I was going to say. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, on it. Um, it, it seems like well, I'm, most folks have had an opportunity to at least weigh in initially, which is great. I do want to take a break, uh, and then we'll sort of pick up the conversation from here and see where we, where we want to go with it. Um, and maybe we can get back to... Well, well, actually, let's talk about it after <laughs> where where we go um, after this. So, but for now, let's take a ten minute break. We're going to reconvene at eight forty, and uh, we are going to reconvene here. Uh, Jack, you are going to kick us off if you're ready. <laughs> I, I am ready. Thank you. Um, and I'm actually following up on what. 
what Jay was just talking about, because as uh, we haven't really talked much about the bonding thing yet, and I think that's probably a bigger discussion, but I would have to say that of, uh, of all the proposals for bonding, the uh, land acquisition for the recreation center is probably the one that gives me the most pause. And uh, part of it is that we don't really have uh, a fully developed uh, plan for the new recreation center itself, if that's what we're going to do. And part of it is because I would like to think through some more the, uh, the degree to which the success of our placing the recreation center on that location is dependent on the success of the private uh, development of the hub that we had a presentation on. And I don't really know whether, you know, what their financials look like and whether they're uh, whether the, the business is going to make it or not, but uh, and I, I certainly hope that, hope that it does. My uh, one of the things I uh, that was in my head is after we had that presentation and I was as I was going home was that I wish that uh, some of the people making that presentation were younger than me, so that we can have a really think more that this is the thing that is going to attract people that are younger than me and are is going to be going not just as long as people my age are still able to go out and play ten play tennis but with is going to be used and useful by younger families by uh, people who uh, i suspect are not most mostly not using that kind of facility. Just thinking of the uh, young families I know in town, people in their 30s, 40s, I think they're not, they're mostly not going to facilities like that, although it's, this is not a scientific uh, study at all. But uh, that's something that uh, that kind of worries me about uh, about going down that road, and I think we I would want to be more confident before we do that. Go ahead, Connor. Can I just ask you: Does it hinge on the hub being successful? Um, That's my question. Yeah, no, because I look at the alternatives, right? Um, I, I don't think you can polish that building on Barry Street up enough to ever make it viable. And I'd rather put housing there, frankly, the more I think about it. Um, and it doesn't seem like there's enough space down at the, 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 the rec fields there. So even if it was standalone, I, I, I think I'd be inclined to go in that direction, you know, if for nothing else and lack of other options. It's... Mm -hmm. And Jack, yeah, it's just to follow up, I totally appreciate your point. And, and if I wasn't as clear um, as I could have been, I apologize. But I'm with you 100%. I, that being that how we utilize and that space and that land is crucial. And what, what would the plan be? And that we would have to go into it not saying, oh, we're doing this so that the hub or you know X or Y organization is just going to decide what to do with it. But I do feel like the, the opportunity to for the city to take ownership of that land, if this is an, if this is the t a time to happen, is not one that we should take lightly and not one that we would, um, even if it takes us, not that one that we let, would want to let pass. And even if it takes us a couple of years to figure out a plan and, and do a, a significant community outreach and find partner or a partner or partners in the community to help develop it as best we could um it, it would the opportunity to be able to, to be able to control the fate of that land i think is is significant and 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 unique in, in its timeliness yeah uh donna and then lauren yeah and i would just add to that it's a great question jack 
I prefer we own the land and that we also don't exclude housing. We could do a really good collective housing there that's multi units, really smartly done. Um, and I just give kudos to Steve Rubiani, who really is willing to think about having the city own it. I mean, he's really such a civic minded person. I just, it's an opportunity I would hate for us to miss. And then if we're in charge, fine, we can reach out to hub group and lots of groups to make lots of things work out there. And that would be part of the study and looking at it. My oh, good. Yeah, I, I was wondering the same thing about how how tied in. So thanks for raising that question and appreciate the responses. One of my constituents had what I thought was a great idea of creating a youth advisory committee to work with the city to help inform and think about what the opportunities. Um, so I'll be connecting her with Cameron probably. <laughs> to, she's uh, very plugged into the parents group and stuff. So I think could, um, but I thought um, that idea of getting some different perspectives and you know being able to have this as an opportunity, take advantage of uh, this moment of the land being available seems to make a lot of sense to me and then look at what our options are and and work with the community on you know what is going to be a resource for um for people for years to come yeah great uh, but uh, just to circle back um particularly to the bonds in general um you know like one possibility is that we move forward with the bonds sort of as proposed uh, we could also reshuffle them we could also say we want to pull this one off of the list for now and there and it will we'll actually officially vote on this later but um the where i'm thinking about going just so you know is i would love to let's just talk about the bonds are we okay with them do we want to redo any of them and then i would like to come back to the um, budget in general and uh, a number of folks proposed, I, I heard four different things, maybe I'm wrong, maybe there are five. And I'd like to just get like a straw poll, you know, like are people interested in uh, pursuing uh, the, the things that were talked about? Um, so that should give us an idea of sort of where we're landing um, and we'll see whether that is palatable <laughs> to us in terms of the, what that implies for the increase or the percentage or, or whatever. Um, so that's kind of where I'm anticipating this conversation going, if that's okay here, team. Um, but coming back to just the bonds in general, um, I, I want to come back to you, Jack. Do you, uh, are you proposing that we that we pull that one off of the list? Or do you, you don't, I, I, <laughs> you also don't have to <laughs> have a definitive answer to that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a definitive answer okay. yet. I, I think it's an important question to raise, okay. but, uh, but I'm not saying not to, that we shouldn't do it at this okay. point. Okay. Any other uh, proposed changes we have to the bonds? I'm seeing some, some no's here, maybe. Okay, if you do <laughs> keep us posted. Otherwise, um, sounds like we'll move forward with at least the consensus. Anyway, sounds like we're moving forward with the bonds as proposed. Yes, I would appreciate it maybe if uh, Kelly could put together a slide similar to the one we saw, where the grouping of the bond is like in its own little spreadsheet yes. figure, so we can read it and see. We can group the bonds like this. Maybe <clears throat> two or three alternatives of grouping the bonds. Uh, that's yeah, big, big print. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm picturing because there's really four column. Uh, yeah, there's was there four bonds. There's four bonds. So, yeah. you know, what's in each of those bonds? <laughs> Maybe just yeah. by column. Does that make sense? Is, would that, is mean, that kind all, of your picture? So to to make it fairly easy. Uh, so one is the State Street bond. Mm -hmm. So that's the State Street, and, and that's water, sewer, storm drains, sidewalks, paving, all of that. That's 7.2 million. Mm -hmm. um, one is the wastewater plant, which you heard about last week, and that's really a self-contained project. One is the purchase of the, the Elks Club land. So those three are pretty straightforward. It's the, it's the last one, the, the infrastructure. That, so that includes the Berry Street intersection. That includes the street lighting. That includes Confluence Park. That includes the Marvin Street. Uh, storm 
retaining wall. What else is in that? Uh, the grout uh, bridge. The, 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 Grout's, no, the grout, grout bridge no. is not. Oh, that's, that's not. DPW that's, heating, which is part of net zero. Yep. I haven't read the DPW oh, heat, sorry. Yeah, heat. Okay. Sorry, Marvin Street and then Confluence. It, right. it, it totals about uh, 1.8. Right. 1.5. Yeah. 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 So, so we have it. Yeah. The other yeah. So there you go. The yeah. other day, yeah. so, so that's the only one that's got a lot in it. The rest are single mm -hmm. items. I understand, but I also think not only because you had some different presentations in your chart when you so did this, I, I had split out initially the confluence park from that so there, there were five yeah. items and the committee said group those together and I think the only other consideration was whether to lumpy state street in right. with the wastewater plant mm -hmm. well, and I I, I, I I was just talking about the one you have like a screen presentation instead of a spreadsheet on those key mm -hmm. bond groupings yep and maybe I wasn't I wasn't needing to see what all the individual items was but just like a brief naming mm -hmm. for not only a, a clear picture but also for the public i think it's great to have this detail but if you see a, a slide screen that says this bond is the wastewater treatment this one is right. the land this one is the infrastructure and then you have this for backup i just think it helps people to orientate themselves mm -hmm. oh yeah and certainly we would um, want to do that i can't share my screen on this can i so yeah. um, I we also have the oh. <laughs> and you did the same the thing at the, the CIP. Too. You did a, a screenshot yeah, saying so this is the ARPA right restored. This is the ARPA whatever it was, the next phase. And that, that wasn't as clear here. Just somehow supplement the spreadsheet well, we with those have, really clear screens. You can't have two share screens going on at once, helpful. right? I'm not sure. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not currently. Um, this actually oh. is just up there. <laughs> I was disabled right. for a minute there. <laughs> okay, I'm trying. It probably only show up in the Zoom right now. So Kelly's oh, screen. Sorry, this, this, this is not what I'm sorry. It's just, you just in a minimized view. So yeah. you're not sharing. Great. Right. Yep. <clears throat> I get share oh I have to you actually have to share your screen gotcha uh -huh. so, there you go. so this is what you're talking about Donna so this was the slide I showed yes. last week um and um and since then we've put the confluence park in with the infrastructure projects so there there's one less yes so but don i appreciate your point of like consolidating have it being very clear like mm -hmm. this is what each what each dollar amount is and you know one thing oh, yeah. no, that absolutely. we didn't mention was also the the tiff piece for the garage that's on there as well so well but that's not yeah i guess well that, that one's not we're not voting yeah. on i mean that's not going on the ballot that's already passed that's yeah. just a new debt that's going yeah. into that we're paying in our budget so um but i think so so yeah we can recreate this summary very easily yeah but I hear you too, Donna, about the, is there were other columns like ARPA 1, ARPA 2, right. <laughs> CFP so we can, Reserve. Yep. <laughs> so. we, can, we can recreate all okay. of that Great. very easily. Uh, Jack. One thing that, uh, that I had not been thinking of as a potential bond until I heard uh, Donna talking about this is, uh, you know, Donna mentioned that there's a real real possibility to uh, acquire the Elks Club, Club land and uh, develop housing there. And, you know, wherever we want to go to put housing at the housing task force, we've been talking about uh, the idea of proposing a land bank, which is some system for the city to acquire real estate which we would then uh, make available to uh, to developers to uh, to put housing on, and uh, you know the 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 place that we've identified for many years as a as a key 
uh, potential place for uh, housing development is Saban's pasture. And if something like that is potentially on the table for bonding, I think that that's maybe worth thinking about. And I don't know if that was, I know that there's an owner of Saban's pasture and that there's uh, efforts been uh, made to move forward on some kind of development. And we've done some uh, zoning changes to uh, to facilitate that but i think that might be worth looking at i was is another overall uh point about the bond is that i i was i found it very encouraging to see the presentation the the two tables about uh the level of our indebtedness compared to uh, our policy because for the last few years the level of debt's been going up and getting closer and closer to the uh, to the policy now we can see the curve going the other direction which as i say is encouraging for our uh, capacity to take on some projects yeah Any other thoughts on the bonds? Okay, um, I'm going to move on then, if that's all right. Uh, so moving on to talk about the budget. Um, what? Go ahead, if Bill. I, if I may, just yeah. before you, I think I, you know where you're headed. Yeah. Just so that everything's on the table, there were a couple more items that we got submitted. Oh, okay. To just that are not in the budget that other groups put into us. I want to make sure that you had a chance to at least, I mean, you can do what you want with them, but uh, one was the request for $30,000 from ARPA funds from Downstreet to for part of, a, I think it was an alcohol treatment facility. One was $10,000 from the Conservation Commission. Yep. And... It's like a game show here. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yes, there there were funds um, from the Conservation Commission to replenish some of their um, money, seed money for grants, um, because there was a, a large, well, about half of their 40,000 ended up going out to the Hubbard Park um, expansion project. And so they were, you know, wanting to request that they um, maybe get a, an infusion back um, of 10,000. Um, and then there was the Parks Commission who also put forward uh, 5,000 um, to do parks management and community outreach and research specifically around um, the city's parks. Um, and then I've got the Social Economic Justice Committee stipends, which was already mentioned, um, Downstreet, which Bill mentioned. Um, and then there's the Municipal Planning Grant. We, we had put in um, to get it and we haven't gotten it. Um, it, it was a pretty, a uh, competitive pool um, from what um, Mike Miller has reported out. It's of sort of over $850,000 for an available 443000 And so it just didn't come our way. And so that's also $10,000 that's out there that um, really should be. Although we might be able to find that in this. Yeah, we, we can probably, if, if you ask us to find it, we can do that. But I just wanted to highlight some of the things that have kind of come to pass you know, that um, you know, probably need a little consideration that weren't in this budget. So Sorry, at I'm least the three that, that you hadn't mentioned were the 30,000 for Downstreet, the 10,000 for Conservation Commission, and 5,000 for Parks. Okay. And the 10,000 we knew about when we did our budget, I don't know that we knew about the five or the 30. Uh, we knew about the 10 and the five, but the not 10 the 30. The 10 and the five, but not the 30. So and we opted not to include those, <clears throat> but just so you know that those were. Okay, and so we don't need to worry about the municipal planning about grant. The planning grant, we got that. Covered. Okay, all right. Okay, Whew. all right. So, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven <laughs> potential additions um, uh, to the list here, um, starting with the most, the the highest possible amount. Uh, if we did 42,000 for uh, paying committee members, energy coordinator at like 100,000, lobbying firm at 15,000, um, 
we talked about more money for economic development, but I don't know if we had a dollar amount uh, for that. I would suggest that if we're going to do it, it would be another 50,000. Okay. And 30 for the downstreet alcohol treatment. Uh, is that, the, that's a facility? It's housing. It's, oh, it's housing, housing for recovering mother and children. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, it's not treatment, it's housing. Thank you. Yes, that's and right. It, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Transitional housing, yeah. Um, okay, and then 10,000 for Conservation Commission and five for Parks Commission. Kelly, this might, I don't know if this is an opportunity to project the um, the Excel spreadsheet. If we did all of those things, then the increased value I'm looking at here is like 7.6% up from 5.2. I, I, I'm less interested in going up that high, um, but that means not doing something. Um, so, Uh, I want to just take a straw poll on some of these things here. Um, well, actually, what I might propose uh, with the uh, committee, paying committee members, um, I don't know how, how you'd feel about this, Lauren, being on that committee. Um, uh, if if we narrowed the scope to just the committees that we have to have and that we know how many people there are, um, there are going to be, um, I don't know. What do you, what do you think about that? <laughs> the committee, uh, when we were talking about this, um, concept this morning, there, there were a few options and Cameron, please jump in. I mean, understanding. So this was calculated at as if everyone's taking it for every single meeting and um, reaching these five particular committees as a starting place. I mean, I, again, I think the expectation is that a small portion of this money would be spent. So I think it could be scalable, like we could put in less money and just figure out a way to roll it out. So it's fully accessible to certain committees and then if if uptake isn't that high we could you know expand the committees or something yeah. so I, I think we could be a little adaptive with it um you know and so i i, I think there's okay. some flexibility there but okay. getting it in and starting it would be i think really important other thoughts is um, is there general interest in having at least um, some level of paying committee members or is anybody would anybody prefer to not do that one yeah go ahead Donna well, I guess I'm a little hesitant and I would and that's because we've done other things that, that was in that report and hence I thought well what if we just delay this one I'm still nervous about our own recovery uh, I don't think, as we all know, we're not done with this uh, virus and its mutations. Um, and I felt that the body cameras were important, and I felt the social worker increase was important, and we put those in. So, um, and so I would just maybe want to stay stagger it a lot more, or wait till next year. I just, I'm a minority. Okay. okay. Um, other. Yeah, the body cams and the um, other thing you mentioned were from the police review committee. This was from the equity oh, report. I'm sorry. No, it's sorry. okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. She was on both. Yeah, yeah right. that's true. <laughs> that's fair. <right. laughs> um, Keep anyone, me in order. Keep anyone else order. sort of feeling like we shouldn't uh, have some level of funding for that? Okay. Right, so we're in, I, oh yes, go ahead, Jack. I'm just not sure how I feel. I know years ago, uh, I used to come to the council every year and say, the council needs to raise how much the council gets paid because it's otherwise an economic impediment to, to serving. Um, there, we have a lot of committees, and so I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm just kind of on the fence about this. I'm not entirely okay. sure. 
Um, if, if we were going to do it, I'd, I'd almost be tempted to say, well, we'll just appropriate a dollar amount and uh, anyone who's on any city committee who uh, could apply <laughs> apply until the appropriation runs out. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, mm. I'm not sure if I, uh, it makes sense to me to say, well, how, how do we pick out, pick certain committees and not others? Yeah. You know, I would, I would almost propose, like, let's start with $30,000. How many committees could that cover? And to be fair, I, I would, like I said, I would start with the, the, the statutory ones <laughs> and then um, see like if we can crunch some numbers between now and the next meeting see how see how that plays out um, but start with, with something like 30,000 um, which is not the whole the whole 42 but it's I mean talk about like an impediment to serving that you're getting nothing now so um, you know it'd be it'd be better than nothing um, so I guess and I, I I start with that just as a place to like have a place to start, um, and like we can continue to tweak that number or change it or go back or whatever. <laughs> I support um, I support that. Um, but yeah, just as I, a, yeah, go ahead, Jay. No, I think that that makes sense, and you know, sort of call it a pilot project. Yeah. Just um, to, to see how it plays out, but I think ultimately the goal is to make the committees more accessible to our community and so it's I, I would you know as we approach it it would be to you know the, the reason we would do that is so that we could have a, a broader pool and and a more diverse pool of folks yeah. who would participate so that would be our benchmark as to whether it's successful or not not um did we figure out how to dole it out um to the people who are already doing it right. if you, you know because that that's clearly is a you know that administratively that's a challenge to mm -hmm. how, do, how do we maintain equity and fairness and how we can distribute those funds but at the same time if it's successful it's successful if because if we've have a broader pool of folks who are willing participants not just um mm. being figuring out exactly how we distribute that money to folks who are already doing it so that that would be my perspective on how and i'm fine with that 30k number to sort of and, and with the statutory committees i think that that makes sense mm -hmm. um but i just want that to be our mindset not just how you know how it's distributed okay um moving on the um uh, another one that i heard was um the uh lobbying firm um hiring hiring some lobbying um fifteen thousand dollars you proposed um thoughts general you know thumbs up thumbs down where are we at yes lauren go ahead i mean i i might be the other person who supported this previously but i but i think i i just i think this one will pay for itself like just being someone who spends a lot of time at the state house like you don't know what you don't know if you don't have someone in the room they whip through the budget so fast. They talk about opportunities and having someone who's there with Montpelier's interest in mind and is just monitoring it. It's I I think with so much money flowing around right now, like there's I don't see almost any way we don't get that money back. And and then some other thoughts. Yeah, Jack. As a lobbyist myself, I think that. Uh, Lobbying is is of great value, and the last time we had it on, I think the reason it didn't make it eventually is that money was very tight, and and we decided, rightly or wrongly, that this was a place not to go. But but I don't have the sense that money is quite as tight this year, and I'd be inclined to probably do it. Donna. <laughs> We're looking at the seven things that all have substantial need, whether it's the stipend of any amount, the downtown housing for recovery moms and their kids, those particularly, and then the conservation and the parks. 
So I find, I'm not sure we have money for those. I find it very hard to put 15 for a lobbyist because 15, I don't think is enough to keep them in the room. You're gonna get a lobbyist you're sharing with a lot of other groups. And if there's a conflict, which place do they go? Every organization I've worked with that shared a lobbyist at this level doesn't always have a person in the room. And I think we have a lot of ears there already. So I would not fund the lobbyists over these other things. Uh, go ahead, Connor. Just to, to address that concern, uh, a lot of the firms would have 10 lobbyists in the building, right? So somebody might be in the budget committee, somebody might be like in judiciary. Um, it, it's not just one lobbyist stretch then, it's, it's multiple lobbyists looking there. And uh, you know, if they saw something, okay, ah, this looks like something Chief Pete needs to get down for. They could give us a ring, we could do the work. Uh, but it's not somebody running from committee room to committee room there. They're in there already, and they're in many committee rooms, like looking at this. So yeah, so I just want to address that concern. Hmm. Other thoughts? This is something that I have in the past anyway, not been in favor of because it, um, probably because I, um, I feel very separate from that world and I don't fully understand it, but um, You know, for fifteen thousand dollars, part of me is is open to it. In that, like, let's try it and see. I can't believe I'm saying that, but um, you know, we could try it and see if it does manifest. Um, I, I have. Yeah. I, I, I'm not trying to argue for or against it. But I have a question. Are we. It sounds like a lot of what we're talking about is for the session that's coming up in a month and a half. Yeah. Because this is That's this true. is not, it's not going to take effect next year, right? So one of the questions would be if we want to try it, should we see if we can scrape? Up? I mean, I don't, and I can't I can't promise that we can. We'd have to look. But um, is this more of an immediate need than waiting till twenty twenty three, and then so just it's a question? Interesting question. I mean, I'd be of the opinion we'll definitely need it next year too. But right. like you're saying, Bill, it's like you know now is when the federal money is coming down. Right. It would be better to have them in the room mm -hmm. starting in January. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, the same as possible. Well, especially given that circumstance, is that something that folks are interested in? At least seeing if we can find fifteen thousand dollars. Sure. It's worth a look. Okay, it's worth a look. Um, it's not the same question as. Is it should, is it worth putting in the budget? Um, no, but I was just it was the frame of reference. There's all this stuff happening yeah, and blah blah blah. Right. I was like, well, this isn't going to happen for a year from now. So, Jay or Jennifer, any thoughts on on that particular point? If not, that's fine. No, just agree that it <laughs> find it. I mean, it, <laughs> what does that mean? Let's take it away from some yeah, from somebody that's else. What it means. You know, try to prioritize. But this is a unique time an opportunity with the amount of federal dollars that are that are coming down so i think well, how it, about for, for i think it's worthwhile and i think it's also worthwhile looking looking ahead okay yeah absolutely okay. for that amount and I agree with lauren that it's the type of thing that um could uh fairly quickly uh, recoup itself come back to us so and I'll just say this uh, again, it's up to you whether at the end of the day, once you see the whole bottom line, you keep it. But if you did and we tried it this year and we weren't happy, we can just use the either if it's if we decide by the end of January, we don't want it. We could take it out of the budget or we could have it in there and use it for some other purpose. So match one of those grant funds. You know, I'm. Um, I'm going to move on from that one. I hope that's okay. I probably should have started with the requests that we got. Um, so um, uh, let's talk about the uh, request from Downstreet uh, for $30,000 from potentially ARPA funds. Where are people at with that? I support it. I don't know if there's any way to make any kind of uh, partnership with the housing uh, trust fund to reduce our share coming out of it or not, but. Interesting question. Uh, Jennifer. I support it. It doesn't directly affect the communities that I work in, so. Yeah. 
Yeah. Other thoughts? I support it. Do you support it? I, yep, Jack does, Lauren does, I do. Okay, so 30,000. Yeah, but yeah. so the, and that would be from ARPA two. ARPA Presumably, two. that would reduce the water sewer amount at least for now to four seventy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay? Cool. Okay. So so it's not we're not adding it on. Thank you for that clarification. I appreciate that. That's not okay. <laughs> okay, um, and then the Conservation Commission's request to replenish some of their funds uh, so they can have, um, have more available for grants. Do I have, if I haven't captured that correctly, let me know, but uh, thoughts on that one? Jack. Is the proposal here not that it's for to be used for a specific project or program at this time? But that they want to be able to respond to something that uh, arises when it uh, without delay. So they had a so there's a long history to this. The, a number of years ago now, they had a, a conservation fund, a one cent for conservation. It was on the ballot one time, and I think it raised you now sixty or seventy thousand dollars at the time. And they've slowly dwindled that down and they want to put some more money back into that fund um, and obviously it's up to you i will tell you that that was on the table for our budget deliberations and didn't make it into our recommendation and you know because they're a commission they asked to come directly you know whereas other departments and things don't get to do that so just but so then so the plan would be for them to not not just use that small amount where they're asking for to spend on stuff but to be use it to leverage for for other bigger projects to go into their fund to use as they see strategically okay. as it goes forward yeah thanks uh lauren um first of all well we're on this alec amazing work congrats on fundraising for the hubbard park expansion that is amazing yes. yay great job um one idea that it had come up a while ago around the ARPA two funds was um, going out to all of our commissions and committees and what is not included in the budget and what would request and needs be and have that be part of a public process. And, you know, I could see this as the kind of thing that could come up in that format, perhaps um, the parks I'm not and sure the how it would be eligible. though. Hmm. It's for grants. For grants for okay so so maybe it's, pretty it's specific only for water sewer you know certain income issues broadband Star. It's pretty yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry could, remind me how they get how they're funded already they're, they're, so typically they're in the budget there's a small amount uh, i don't know how, what is it four or five thousand dollars if that thirty five hundred dollars in the <laughs> In, in the annual budget that they have and they if they don't use it they lose it right that goes to the general fund they don't accumulate that and so that's really all they have other than this one time infusion of a conservation fund that they got a number of years ago now uh, and have slowly whittled it down and I think they were looking to build that back up I mean it's not a bad idea but there's a you know there's a lot of ideas so <laughs> If we gave them this money, does it go into a separate fund that does care that does roll over? Uh, right. So, <laughs> what do folks want to do? do? You want to put in? I've got another question. Yeah, go ahead, Jack. Um, are Are they in the budget this year for? $3,500 and if they have not been spending it in recent years, and I don't know if they have been, but could we change that appropriation so that uh, it does carry forward so that they, if they don't use the money, they could build it back up again? And okay. Kelly, maybe you know if they've been spending it uh, year by year. 
Yeah, I mean, so we could certainly make sure it goes into the reserve. It's something that would just need to be set up that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I can definitely look into it for sure. And then, you know, provide a recommendation and take action to make sure that happens if that's what you'd like to do. Thanks. It would also be good to know if they are in fact not consistently not spending the 3500 okay. um, yeah. if they are you know and they're using it on valuable things i hate to take that away but <clears throat> um but I, I like where you're going with that <laughs> if if they're not using it yeah let's would you cap it if it's a rollover would you cap the rollover to a certain amount or ask them to talk about what they're going to use it for if it gets over a certain amount something like that because you know there are certain kinds of things that you may need to accumulate money over a few years before you're ready to do it but i don't know enough about what they're doing to really know how to answer that go ahead lauren oh i'm just noticing that alec has his hand up somewhere. oh okay yeah alec go ahead thank you Uh, yeah, I, um, I'm the staff liaison to the conservation committee. I could give a little insight um, just for information. So the, the, the request is actually from the Conservation Fund Advisory Board, which is different than the Conservation Commission. Um, the commission is a appointed group and they have $3,500 to discretionary money. And the Conservation Fund Advisory Board is um, I believe three members of the conservation commission and two members of the public at large and they have this pot of money that bill's talking about um, to give out in grants and so the advisory board is asking for the ten thousand dollars and the, the commission gets the thirty five hundred so that's just the informational overview on those two entities <clears throat> thank you for that clarification <laughs> Yeah, go ahead, Donna. Uh, can you tell us what they've spent it on? What the, the 10,000 or what, what they've had in the past? Is that a question for me or Kelly or Bill? Well, I thought maybe you would know, but she probably she can echo you. Uh, so they I think the original bond was for $40,000, $45,000, maybe. Um, and they just gave $20,000 toward this project, the Hubbard Park expansion project as seed money. Um, I don't know what else they've given it to. I think they might've paid for the city's natural resources inventory from 2007, but that also might've been out of the conservation commission. That was before my time. Thank you. And I, I don't suppose it's logical to to have the conservation commission's unspent funds roll over into this fund because it's I mean so it, that's could why, we that's what I was kind of answering so I <laughs> I was like well why can't we okay. we could okay um, if that is the case then do we want to change the the amount I mean if there or are we saying like you can <laughs> Uh, or should we just give them anything or wait till money rolls over? Or what do you, what do you want to do team? I mean, I, I'd be inclined to leave it off for now, you know, okay. until we go through the list and okay. it, maybe like, come back, you to know, it. a lot can change in a week. Maybe we'll get more information. Maybe there'll be okay. some other mechanism to shift it around, but. Okay. So leave it off for now. Just yeah. Especially. <laughs> yeah. That uh, other thoughts. Okay, I'm I'm happy to leave it off for now and revisit it um, another time, especially if we can look into rolling some funds over for them. Um, uh, Parks Commission outreach, five thousand dollars. This yeah, go ahead, Jay. Well, I just I think that for all the work that that. Um, Alec and the Parks Commission have been doing, um, especially in collaboration, leveraging a significant grant with uh, Montpelier Alive to develop the branding around um, building a, a recreation-based economy. Um, I think you know there's there's been some really good work done there. 
Um, I don't know that this is specifically what they're looking for that $5,000 to help promote, but um, given the, the, you know, given the work that that they've done and that's been done and, and the, the equity that's built up and ready to, to, to go, I think it's a pretty small drop in the bucket to be able to leverage a lot, a lot of really good um, work, existing work. So mm -hmm. it seems to me like it's small enough that it's, it makes a lot of sense to, to mm -hmm. include. Donna gives a, giving us a thumbs up, Connor, thumbs up. You know, something that I like about this is so, uh, it, it feels specific. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got you. That, that helps. Uh, so I'm getting the sense that we're leaving that one in um, for now. A uh, couple others, so that I'm kind of leaving the, the bigger ticket things um, to the end here. Um, uh, energy coordinator, which could be on the scale of $100,000 if, if it was a, a whole position. Um, actually, and just for context, let me just um, see where we're at right. Oh, you, you've got it up there already. Uh, so. 30, 15 parks. So we're at 5.7 right now. Um, and if we added in 100,000 for energy coordinator, what, what would that put us at? 6.7, okay. Uh, thoughts team. Is there general interest? I could just ask. Uh, so this would be an ongoing. It's it's a hundred thousand every year, right? It's, Where, it's not a one time. I okay. think that's the idea. Yeah. Uh, Jack, I like the idea, and I like the idea of uh, we're saving uh, that is could very well uh, pay for itself. Um, we also know though that the. I think the next item on the list is add another full-time social worker. Am I right? I thought that was already in. Or no? Am I? So it's am half I in, half out. So the the <laughs> let's get to let's finish this one first. So we get we can always get the list the full list up there and see. Okay, yeah. maybe I'd misunderstood something. That's so, so the the police review committee we we have a half-time social worker now. Right. The police review committee recommended, and we have a half time peer, uh, worker. peer worker. So they recommended adding 1.0 full time social worker and yep. another half time peer worker. Yeah. So that would be a total of 1.5 FTE. Right. We, this budget only has a 0. 0.5 FTE. Okay. For some reason, so it's expanding the half time social worker to full time. Okay. With presumably the half time still shared. Well, I mean, we presumably would have half of it shared with Barry, and then we'd have our own half time, okay. or what, however that would work. Um, so there is still 1.0 recommended from the police review committee that is not funded in this budget. Okay, for a social worker. For, well, half for a social worker, half, half for, for a peer okay, worker. okay. So half for social worker, half for a um, however you peer outreach. Is that what we're calling? Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And so that's what I'm saying. Oh. Okay. That, that, that's what I'm saying that we've got that we're, and we we're might as well correct the answer now. Okay. <laughs> I also wanted to remind all of y'all that um, you have approved and there is funding for the homelessness task force. And one of their projects that you recently approved for this year is to continue hiring additional peer support workers through our partnership with Good Sam. And I anticipate but cannot confirm that that will probably continue to be part of their funding allocation that they use their 45,000, which mm -hmm. was included in this budget to continue that for fiscal year 23. So I want that also to um, be part of this conversation. So thank, thank you. you. So, so you're anticipating that that may go towards either the half peer outreach per, um, person or the half social worker. And I understood, peer outreach, I understood yes, peer the, outreach. Okay. the committee to recommend an additional half beyond the half we already have. Is that right? Right. Or just and a half. <laughs> so many halves. We can check. We can yeah, go ahead, Lauren. There, there actually, um, the most recent conversation of the police review committee and 
Jack jump in if I'm misremembering, but there actually was an ongoing conversation of among the kind of service providers of like what is the right balance between um, you know what the city is currently funding, what the needs are that um, that they're seeing in terms of like how to allocate this. So they were actually going to come back with a recommendation. So if we had you know funding, if we've done in the homelessness task force line item, some increased funding plus the half FTE. Um, I mean, I, I I think it's all like positive steps towards it. And it wasn't definitive, like it must be one full FTE peer support and this, it was a little squishier than that. And they, But they were doing some work to get some definition and Chief Pete might be able to um, provide some more context if, because he's the one who's part of that conversation. To, and so yeah and some of us did get an email from dan towel who's one of the members of the police review commission um but it looks like it was, it was me um maybe not lauren bill but a few people suggesting i hope we can be creative and resourceful to collaborate to find funding for the 1.0 fte portion of the 1.5 so at least there's some movement to still put in the one point the full 1.5 that the police commission review police commission asked for so i'm just when i talked about the energy coordinator i'm just thinking well it could well come down to where do we want to put our hundred thousand yeah. at column a or column b yeah yeah sort of an economic development you get the column c there you go <laughs> yep. no <laughs> yeah well and um you know i guess we could think about this uh almost in fifty thousand increments um because you know well I, oh go ahead I, well i did have an idea um i was actually thinking about it with both the energy coordinator and the economic development um you know we we talked about this in a few years ago but we could leave the fifty thousand dollars in for the economic development, um, and instead of using it the way we planned, is basically say we're gonna we're gonna assume we're gonna bring on a person, but we wouldn't do it till halfway through the fiscal year. So it would be knowing that the following year we're on the hook for the whole thing, uh, but it would get it started. We could do the same thing, presumably with the energy coordinator, is say, look, you know, yeah, we want one yesterday, but re, you know, a year from now we'll be hiring someone. It's half in, and then we'll be full time. Year before, if money got tight, so I think that's a way to open the door to the commitment without paying, you know, mm -hmm. just delay the hiring. So, um, or do we just hire a half time? Well, that's also possible. Person, we do that also. That could be the other option, right? One or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, Donna, go ahead. Do we have a staff member now that's doing some partial time with building maintenance? Hmm. So our, our assessor was um, on, we were hiring, he was doing maintenance coordination uh, an extra day a week, but he's cut that back. Um, and he's actually hoping to cut it all back. <laughs> he wants to retire, but we need to find an assessor. Um, I mean, at one time we, we thought about connecting the two. Yeah, we, we talked about a sustainability facilities coordinator and we went a different direction. And so now we don't have that. And, we need to go back, you know, we probably do need to go back to that. So yeah. I think especially if we're serious about our our net zero twenty fifty goal for the mm -hmm. whole community. I and mean, we've had a lot of conversation about the twenty thirty goal and we've got a roadmap, we've got good progress. This is within our domain. Um, but there even so there are still things that need to be done, as Lauren pointed out, but it's almost like we haven't even touched the twenty fifty goal and mm -hmm. um and so, you know, we've got to, I, I think if, if nobody is dedicated to doing that, it won't happen because it's, it can't rely on a group of volunteers to make that happen. Um, but, and I, I will just say like, I'm open to any of the options <laughs> that include it somehow. <laughs> um, yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I like the idea of this being, a, Jack mentioned a placeholder and then we can flush out the energy coordinator might be combined with some other, at least the first year, and then keep moving in that direction. Yep. 
Uh, I mean, so what I've got in my spreadsheet right now is um, 50,000 for an energy, energy coordinator, 50,000 for economic development and 50,000. A new 50,000 in addition to the 50 we already have? Well, I guess we can talk about that. Um, that's sort of up for discussion. And then 50 for the half social worker. Um, if we did, if it was an additional 50 for each of those things, that I think puts us at 7.1%, which is starting to get a little bit out of the palatable. Like, I would like to keep it below seven. <laughs> um, it, does anybody else have ballpark percentages that they would like to keep it within or or not? I mean, if, if it's a separate comment, go ahead. I, I mean, I guess just answering that question, I agree seven starts feeling yeah. uncomfortable, yeah. really high. Um, I mean, one thing, and I know that we absolutely cannot count on this, um, but I was having a conversation with um, some appropriations committee members um, in the house who expressed interest in funding peer outreach work and were looking at Montpelier as an exciting model and said, we should be helping fund the work that you all are doing. So I think our, our newly hired lobbyists that <laughs> we're gonna scrape for the money for this year. Um, I, I do think there's an interest in that. Um, I have not heard a similar thing around the energy coordinator. Like I know there's staff they're hiring at the RPCs, um, for example, to help connect communities to some of these energy dollars that are out there. Um, but it, it's not the same thing as having, you know, your own community doing it. So even though I strongly support the peer support outreach, I feel like we're moving in that direction and should make a pitch for the state to be supporting that. So are you suggesting that we keep it in and then are able to take it out once we, we get money for it? Or um, are you suggesting something else? Or I guess I, I might suggest, although I'm not at all wedded to this of in that particular instance sticking with the staff budget pieces that's give that's growing that program we're growing it in two ways already with the homelessness task force um, allocation and increasing the social work line item and then looking for opportunities to grow it further in the coming year with okay. state funding so you would not add an additional half here because we're already expanding it and if we can because we have the money then we then we would that's what you're suggesting. I'm just, uh, okay. All right. So that that takes that out for me. So without that, that's six point seven percent. Fifty thousand for energy. Yeah. yeah. At least that's what I what I have for now. Um. Can we talk about the economic development part of this? I know I sort of was like, oh yeah, 50,000, an additional 50,000. Is that the right number? How are, how are you feeling about that? I, I'm not wedded to any, any particular number there. It, it totally baffles me when we didn't support the group that we had with even 5075, I would oppose it. I think 50,000 is a good placeholder. And if indeed we gain some momentum, but we're doing a lot of things with housing, with the parks, to bring people in. And that's the driver that I think we really need because people are needed for the businesses we have now. And that will make our economy stronger than I think searching out new businesses. All right, so I just wanna comment on that. And what you wanna do is what you wanna do. Um, just to the part that we didn't even support the group we had. We, we, did, we did support them um, to the tune of four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars, four three hundred seventy-five thousand dollars, I think was what it was. We, three, it was at least three or four full years at a hundred thousand dollars each, and then the last year we reduced it a little bit, and then this, then in the current budget we put zero, but that's because we knew they were going away or that they had this full sum of money. So, um, and I think one of the reasons we didn't support them was we had provided of pretty sizable sum of money to them. They had a big reserve and we hadn't seen the, the return that we were necessarily hoping for. So, um, so I, I, you know, I think one of the questions is if we were to refund at that level, would we do it differently? We would bring it in house and have our own person or a contract, you know, do it with someone like Montpelier Alive that's more established. Um, so I'm not saying we should or shouldn't, but it would be a different model, but I, I just, I don't, I'm not sure it's, 
to well, say we like didn't it. fund them because we weren't interested in economic yeah. development. I'm not sure that's the, the, the equation there. But they finally changed their model because they had terrible success with their lack of success with their executive directors. And they went the model that we're now in, thinking about instituting, well, hiring yeah. people to help us do jobs. But yeah. only, anyway, on, only on an I, interim I basis. Could, I, I would stick with the 50,000. So well, and because um, there's already 30,000 in for economic defense. 50 is in the budget 50. now. 50 is in the budget. So an additional 50 we, we that we're proposing, hire full we'd get to hire somebody full time. So that, that's that's what we're saying. Okay, or we could keep it. Well, yeah, okay. Right. Is that what we want to do? Yeah, go ahead. I'm still not convinced an in-house economic development position is the way to go. Um, and once you hire somebody for that, it's, it's, you know, it's harder to eliminate the position um, mm -hmm. once you bring them on board. So I, I'd still like to talk about other options, you know, um, maybe in the $50,000 range. Like keeping the 50000 that we have? Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing some nods. Should we keep the 50000 or... I'm sorry. Um, do we want to add anything more to the 50,000 that is in the budget already? I'm done saying no. I'm seeing, I'm seeing some shaking heads. I, oh, okay. For what it's worth, I mean, I'm inclined to leave it at not add another 50. Okay. I mean, well, not yet. Okay. I think that meaning by that, I mean, we. I think as a city, we need to invest in economic development. Um, I think that, you know, allocating fifty thousand dollars that um, you know Bill and staff could use to you know pursue opportunities is great. Um, you know, one thought would be, like Bill said, would be to if we took that fifty and hired somebody part time or hired somebody to say to start on January first, twenty twenty three. Um, part time maybe but you know if if we hired somebody to if we wanted the right person for the job we would have to hire them to hire them not hey you've got we've got 6 months and then we'll decide again later right. um you know that's that's just not going to work and so um and i think that that was one of the challenges that Montpelier development corp um was was up against they had this sort of set budget anyways but that's a whole nother conversation so I, I do like having that money and then investing it in updating the the economic economic development report um and and then you know using it at, you know on an as needed basis and then having further conversations around how do we make you know make it more permanent within city structure i personally am an advocate for having somebody on on staff to be able to um you know, take on that work and have the autonomy and to to do it. But if um, you know, if, if it's we're, we're push, we're we're up against the limits of of you know adding funds to this budget. I feel like we're we're not necessarily you know at a point that we can do that just yet. So okay. so it would not be an yeah. additional fifty. Yeah, I you know considering that we're coming up from nothing from last year, that that does feel like a. a Substantial change, good progress, and I think we could reevaluate whether we wanted to add an additional 50 um, for the following year. Um, so, all right, we're at 6.2 right now. Um, I might make the pitch that we put the energy coordinator in at 100 now, <laughs> but willing to. to <laughs> what else was on the block? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, that's. I, uh, did we talk through everything that's on your. I mean, we we talked through all the things that I had on so my list. Thing we haven't found yet is charging station. But oh, charging station. We're going to try to do that in capital. No. We'll try to do that in capital, but it will mean something. It might mean something's got to go, so we have to figure out what that was. Uh, Lauren. I mean, that is one where Vermont's getting $21 million for EV charging stations. I have no idea how that money will flow and how quickly that'll come, or if we would definitely get one, but it. I mean, I know we want to get the infrastructure in place so that we could, like for buying the equipment at the same time. Um, but okay. so, but, but I don't know. Just just to note that that was like one of the specific line items in the infrastructure bill that recently passed. 
Yeah, Jack. How much does the charging station cost? Well, see, that's that's a, a question I had heard and, and said. Right. So it must be <laughs> true. <laughs> and said fifty thousand. I said fifty thousand, but I. Well, it is right because the th the thing is like if we just needed to charge, you know, once a day, then you'd probably get away with a level two. And those are much. They're slower, but they're much cheaper, like significantly cheaper. Um, but a level three charging station, um, I had heard that it was anywhere between fifty thousand and a hundred thousand um, dollars. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. What are they called? Uh, level three uh, fast everyone's, chargers. Everyone's on their Google machines looking for the price. Yeah, yeah. right. So yeah, fifty thousand plus average cost. And does that assume that we would get some uh, participation in the cost from uh, Green Mountain Power? And I don't know if we I would, don't know. but. This is one that I think we probably need a little bit more research on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so maybe well, this yeah, is. Yeah, we can keep looking at it. I just, that was the only other thing that was on. Oh, that was on your, on that. your radar? Okay. Um, well, uh, so it looks, I, I'm glad to hear that we kind of have a, a cap, it sounds like, of at least somewhere around 7%, which to be fair, I mean, the, the, one of the reasons that that's a cap for me is thinking about it in terms of, you know, we had a nearly flat budget last year, and so 3% is, is a digestible number, and so thinking about it in terms of like, it's effectively 3% last year and 3% this year. Um, that, that number, you're right. It's just about right at inflation too. Oh yeah, well. So right. you're, mm -hmm. yeah. That's also pretty sellable. Right. Um, just. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, before you go, I just want to note. Um, I do want to just check in with folks that if, see if people are are up for an energy coordinator position at fifty thousand. But pause on that. Go ahead, Connor. No, I was just going to ask where the schools at. But... And, I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. I think they're talking about it. Well, I shouldn't speculate. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, but thoughts on energy coordinator at 50,000. Uh, Lauren, go ahead. Just curious, does the school employ any sustainability person or is it no. just their facilities? They I just mean, have a facilities. I, I, I would prefer uh, that we put it in at 100, um, the energy coordinator. I think it'll be a great investment. Um, if we end up really stuck, I'm just thinking like between the schools, some there are examples where multiple communities have partnered on one of these positions. Like, so I think we could get creative if we need to. I think somebody full time would be awesome. <laughs> That's like what I would love to strive for. And just throwing that out there that I, I, I would hate to wait and do it so we're talking, you know, January 2024 that someone's starting and we've missed, but, you know, there's all these like opportunities coming up soon. So I hate to put it off if we do like the 50,000 and wait for half of the year to mm -hmm. go by. Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer, did I see your hand? Yes. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Rude. Um, could somebody explain to me what the energy coordinator would do? Yes. Uh, do you want to take a stab at Lauren or should I? Okay. Uh, yeah, so there are a number of things that they could potentially uh, do. So we have a district heat plant um, that provides, uh, you know, wood chip powered heat to municipal buildings. Um, it needs um, a business plan and ideally more customers, but it hasn't really fallen to anybody to manage that. So that's one um, big uh, piece of it. Um, another is, um, and this is typical for energy coordinators that work in other places thinking about um, particularly uh, projects that are within the scope of the city of like efficiency or fuel switching um, that they could help be basically like managing those projects and make sure that they go forward it could, because right now like just as an example um the the like the police uh building uh was at one point 
uh, it needed a new air conditioning system and uh, it was a huge energy hog, uh, but there was no person uh, that was sort of in charge of looking at, okay, well, so if we need a new air conditioning, what should it be? What's the most efficient thing? And also nobody was looking necessarily at the time, except for the, the energy committee at, uh, oh my gosh, this is a, a huge uh, energy suck right now. And so how do we bring that down? Do we need more insulation? Do we need, um, you know, oh, oh gosh, this button is stuck on, you know, the, the things like that. Um, so having somebody who's, whose job it is to be vigilant about that for the city. Um, there are, we have a green revolving loan fund um, for the city where basically we're borrowing from ourselves to, to do these um, projects. Um, and we know that there are more projects out there, but uh, to have someone who could, who could suggest, okay, this is the next best use of this money, um, that would be, uh, you know, that would be valuable. Um, and then thinking of, so, so there's, there's the within the city sort of, when I say the city, within city operations, within the, like municipal operations, um, uh, there's, but then, you know, looking beyond that uh, to the, the commitment that we've made to reach net zero energy for the community by 2050. Um, That's my next question. <laughs> yeah, right. So, um, gosh, that means a lot of different things. And so how do we start moving that direction? So that person could also potentially be looking at what's working in other cities and say, you know what, this would be a policy that we could potentially implement here. Um, I can think of like a, a number off the top of my head, but I'm sorry, I have a lot to say about this. Is that <laughs> there's there's all these potentials. Um, you know, we've we've had this conversation about the home energy information ordinance, you know, someone could be um, sort of managing that. Okay. Um, I'll stop. No, no. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That was very specific. Okay. And um, you answered all the things that were going on in my brain as far as keeping us green and moving us into a greener space. So thank you. Yeah, yeah fair enough. Yeah, Lauren, go ahead. I mean, to me, one of the things that seems most exciting, like given the moment we're in about having this position, it's you know, so we can look at the city operations. I think there's tons of opportunity, um, but there's also like rolling out all of this money for community members. So for example, um, low income weatherization programs, which for years have been underfunded and there's been long wait lists. Now, I mean, they put 25 million into weatherization last year. Mm -hmm. So the wait lists, the last I heard from someone recently, don't quote me on it, but that the wait lists are going away right now because there's finally enough money so, you know, if we could be educating community members about what's available, I mean, this is something that could just be saving people money on their monthly energy bills, which is a huge burden for a lot of families. Um, so I think there's, you know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities and someone just being able to stay on top of it and then do that outreach. Um, even think of the home energy ordinance, like somebody who could have could be in charge of implementing that helping people. I mean, it's been, um, you know, tough with our current staffing structure to uh, make that work seamlessly, but I, I would be really excited for how we could also be benefiting the community with um, with the position. Other thoughts? Jack, go ahead. I, I like the idea. I would like to. I would put it in for now and have it for more uh, more discussion. We might not stay in at this level, but uh, if if we were to go fifty thousand dollars, I would be inclined to um, start it as a full time position halfway through the year rather than ask someone to try to do it uh, as a half time uh, job because I think there's probably enough work there to uh, to have someone be doing it full time and. Uh, probably save their salary yeah so just so i'm clear you're okay with that at a hundred thousand for now we could revisit it yeah okay yep Don oh donna your thumbs up other thoughts thumbs up you don't have to weigh in if you don't want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love the idea i'm just trying to balance it against yeah everything else i mean yeah i mean there's more than a full-time job 
you know, of all the things I just heard that could be done, that's that's like that's a staff, right? That's a new department, you know. So, um, it, you know, and I, I don't really mean to be facetious, but at the same time, it's if we approach this as like, hey, we just if we throw a hundred thousand dollars at this, we want one person to do all these things. Is that realistic? You know, who who's that person, and what are they good at doing? Um, and how are we getting the best return on that investment? So I, I'm just I, I, I'm more than happy to keep it in, and I, you know, conceptually I love the idea, um, but again, I'm just trying to um, understand how it, like, how we can get the best return on that investment, and how are we putting up, putting it, you know, relative to other things that um, we're funding or not. That's all. So happy to have more conversation about it. Go ahead, Jack. On another topic, so I'll wait until we're done with the energy coordinator. Topic. I think we may be done with that particular topic, okay. and which I, I just want to note before you go um, that as we're at six point seven right now, um, that was as far as I know the whole list, and so we're I think we're approaching done uh, with this conversation, which is very exciting. Um, go ahead. You know, I think I'll wait and I'll talk to uh, Donna before our next meeting and maybe talk about something else then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we, we might want to put um, the CVPSA in, on the bottom of there too, just to realize that that's, yep. would you say that was for, oh, you've already added it in? It's already added in. Oh, it's up. Uh, no, it isn't. I, I don't think it's, it's not? Nope. No, it is. Uh, I think 14. 14? I put it in mine. It wasn't on this one. Oh, uh, what what percentage are you at now? Six point seven. Okay, that's that's what I had too. Okay. Yeah, it's Isn't that fourteen thousand one hundred from CVPSA basically what's left over from the uh, <clears throat> pandemic relief from this year? <laughs> I'm not saying we can use, I don't know that we can use that yeah. leftover money for that. So, uh, it's like a magic trick. <laughs> it's going to pay for the lobbyists. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, well, knowing that we will have more conversation about this feels like we have a, a good start, a uh, good foundation. Um, I, well, to be fair, I think we started with a good foundation, and I think we're um, closer to a, a final number, which is excellent. Um, yeah, Jack, go ahead. I know that you stated earlier that we're mainly having tonight for uh, for council members, yes. but if you know Vicki Lane had her hand up for a long time, if she's still there, and I'm not seeing her anymore. She's no, she's oh, okay. she's still there. I, I would like to give her a chance I agree to I agree um Vicky would you like Vicky Lane would you like to to share your thoughts yes um I just want to bring a little reality to you all um pertaining to those of us that are low income and effective low income decreasing homeowners um next month my mortgage payment goes up a hundred dollars due entirely to the taxes has absolutely nothing to do with my interest rates i'm in the 28th year of a 30-year mortgage and it's going up entirely because of property taxes i don't know where all this money is that you guys seem to think is flowing freely but it sure as hell isn't flowing freely to people like me, um, you're talking about another increase in property taxes. And I'm, I'm not sure how much more I can afford. A hundred dollars or more a month going to my mortgage company for property taxes is a major deal to me, considering the fact that every, the cost of absolutely everything has gone up significantly. Every item of food, gas, heating oil, everything. And you guys were sitting there for the last 
two and a half hours, three and a half hours, talking about everything you can add into this thing. And I just, I, I don't know what you guys expect of us, but um, I can't afford it. And I'm sure I'm not the only person in the city of Montpelier that's not sitting, that's sitting here looking at those figures and looking at that percentage go up, knowing you're doing a reappraisal and God only knows what you're gonna to do to my taxes after that. And um, looking at this and saying, well, you know, $100,000 for a person is a hell of a lot of money for somebody like me who lives on less than $30,000 a year and is a homeowner um, with medical bills and everything else that are not covered, then I, I just think you guys are missing the boat here. Um, there isn't a single one of you, it seems, a single one of you on that council that has any idea what it's like to be a low income, fixed income, effective fixed income declining what it's like to be somebody like that. And there's tons of us around and we're the ones that work hard to pay our taxes and get everything done. And I just, I just don't understand. I mean, I've been sitting here doing a slow boil, especially when you all started to laugh and say, oh yeah, well, let's up this up. Oh, I can handle, I can handle 6.7%, but God forbid it shouldn't go to seven. Well, that's 0.3% underneath 7%. And I know that the city of Montpelier voters always vote absolutely everything in, but there's an awful lot of us have nots out there that are really struggling to stay in Montpelier and survive. That's just what I wanted to say, thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing that, Vicki. I think that's uh, an important reminder. Um, a couple of thoughts here. Um, Lauren, go ahead. Um, we were just hoping to get your uh, district for the record, Vicki. District yep. three. Okay. Thanks. Uh, and Jennifer. Uh, I'm getting confused because I'm seeing the mute thing on here, but I know I'm not muted. Um, Vicki, I live in District 3, and I'm a renter, and I struggle as well, and I hear you, and I can't afford to buy a home in Montpelier because of the taxes, so I hear you, um, and I am... There is no way... Oh, hang on, I hang on, Vicki. Uh, let's, let's let Jennifer finish her thought. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to let you know that, uh, you know, I am a struggling mother of two and um, living on a fixed income income myself and you know it's part of the reason why I wanted to be on the commission is because I'm not a homeowner and I don't make a lot of money and I struggle and so if you would like to have a conversation with me I would love to chat with you great thank you um, all right and uh, anyone since I've given an opportunity for um, people online to speak anyone in person want to share go ahead uh in the interest of the hour i will save some of mine for a future but what i want to do is encourage you to not postpone your public hearing till january uh i know there's a state law that senator polina got passed the finance the management department is required by statute to engage a meaningful process with the public in the formation of the budget and I feel like that if you wait till January, y'all's decisions are all baked in and, and it's an insurmountable hurdle to, for the public to try to change them at that late date. So I would encourage you to open this up uh, meaningfully uh, at this stage, because all I heard was a lot of ads. I didn't hear any opportunity to talk about a lot of cuts or, or where money is being squandered or wasted. And I, I relate to uh, Vicki's comments that we need to, I mean, I know where we need, we need a new radio system. I, I'll argue that we need much more money in the CVPSA planning budget, but we also don't need unplanned police radios 
in the tens and tens of thousands when we don't even know whether they're going to repeat both the fire and police frequencies. So there's so much that's um, not well considered here um, that I have several pages of notes, but I, at this late hour and with this limited opportunity, I would ask you to sooner open this up for specific uh, areas where they could be cut and invite the public in on that discussion, as well as, I mean, this is a good year to do a level fund, to not add five, you know, or seven. Thank you. Thank you. So just to review the schedule, uh, so I'm looking at our next meeting is 12:22 next Wednesday. Next Wednesday, and it's a regular meeting, but we will have budget on the agenda. Yeah. And so, and then we, depending on where you're at, we have a workshop like this scheduled for the fifth, um, which again would be budget only. And again, it's up to you all what to what degree you want to engage others. And then we are into the, the next two meetings are the January 12th and the 20th. And the 20th is the deadline that we have to be done. And so those the public hearings are usually on the 12th and the 20th. And we have traditionally, you have traditionally changed budgets um, right up until the 20th, mm -hmm. so after public hearings. <clears throat> Uh, my anticipation for next week, uh, so when I when I see workshop in the uh, description of what, what we're doing, that, that's why I'm like, okay, so we're going to prioritize council discussion, but, you know, I'm glad that we did get to hear um, uh, from the, the public too, even those after, um, and, but next week being the budget review, I'm anticipating that, you know, fo if folks have uh, comments on the budget that we might start with that uh, and then go into a conversation um, about uh, basically the, the review of the budget um, and then I'll leave it up to you all as to whether or not uh, you want to do another budget workshop but uh, you, you would have public that, that could be a workshop or a review however or you, yeah. you know, if, if you reach a preliminary decision next week and you don't need it, you go straight right. to the public hearings. Go, exactly. Then we go straight to the public hearings. Um, does that process sound okay, team? Any thoughts? Okay. So we will have um, opportunity for public comment at the next uh, meeting. Um, at least that's my anticipation. Um, there's other things on the on the agenda as well. Um, I think we're still inviting our legislative delegation. Um, and we have an audit report um, next time. So anyway, there's no, other things. No. It won't be just oh, dedicated good. to this. Oh, sorry. Unfortunately, um, just to update on the audit, um, we still have not received our draft statements yet, and okay. not from a lack of trying. Um, and um, we're working on that. So it's likely you will get them before you vote it out um, officially, but it probably will be January. OK. Yes, Jack. Sorry. Um, how much? Uh, notice do we have to give for a uh, public hearing? We're just required to hold them. It's not like plant, it's not like zoning. So okay. we just warn them as public hearings. You have to conduct in it. Actually, it's not even clear that you need to hold official public hearings for the budget. We just have traditionally done that. We do have to have a bond public hearing prior more than a certain number of days and then another one within so many days. Uh, because I just think, thank you, that's, that's helpful. I think that uh, I understand and support the value of getting uh, a lot of public inf input realistically, um, making, it, making it happen before our meeting on January 5th means trying to get people to come to a meeting in the week between Christmas and New Year's, which I don't think is uh, calculated to get very much uh, public input. So I still support the schedule that we we established uh, a yeah. month or so ago. Well, and I, um, I just for some context too, I think other councils work very differently than our council does. My understanding is that other bodies 
um, <clears throat> if it doesn't say public hearing, then they, they don't have to take public comment on it necessarily, except potentially during general business and appearances. Um, and so I, I think, you know, the fact that we're required to do that is maybe like a reflection of that, even though we sort of, we treat most things <laughs> um, with this body as effectively public hearings because we, because we welcome public comment. Um, anyway, that's neither here nor there. And it's 1010, we should be done. Yes. I'm sorry that the public felt left out, but this kind of workshop is really important for me as a council member. Yeah. It's the only way we get a perspective of one another and to think about another person's point of view on the council. So, and, and here it is after 10 with just us talking. And um, we do get a little silly, but it's stressful. Mm -hmm. And so, but we're also just understanding one another. So these workshops are very valuable. And the next meeting, we can share. Yep. That's great. Uh, but we needed this meeting to have something for the public to talk about. And um, and we and as Bill said, we can and do change things, you yes. know, up until the last minute. Uh, all right. So um, we're going to move on then because uh, I think we're in a good spot with that. So we can wrap that up. Uh, so on to uh, council reports. Are you OK to go there, Donna? Oh, sure. <laughs> I just would, uh, one thing is sort of a housekeeping. I got two calls this last week about me being on the homeless task force, and they said they found on the website. I've never knowingly been appointed to that committee. I know Casey, but I'm very <laughs> Casey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my name words. You're just lucky. Uh, so I would like that looked at, but I also, maybe all of us, the one list I saw was uh, the 2021, but I know we did another appointment. And so if there's an email that has all that on there and I've just listed, uh, because I missed a couple meetings when we were doing appointments, and I apologize. But, um, but we didn't oh, put you on the homelessness task yeah. force. But if, Jennifer, are I'm you on? on the, I'm on it, but I'm still in the same emails, and I didn't have Okay. I've been sitting up your not tell your address. Is that not coming through? I I didn't get anything for this meeting. Hmm. Something to. It's okay. But. Yeah. <laughs> and and it's thank nice. you for adding my debate speaking Gmail. It helps me get stuff. So I really really appreciate it, Kelly. Thank you, thank you. And I I would like you to know that it has been very frustrating to have in person remote meetings here. For the public safety authority and generally speaking it's just been myself and Stephen, and it's been very hard to contain using city equipment i'm focusing on the remote i share my laptop no one else on the public safety authority board wants to be live and it's also been an issue for our secretary who has decided not to come both for health reasons and for the fact that Stephen's rather interrupted and it's hard, and I apologize for any level of rudeness of you, Stephen, but it's hard when someone keeps talking to you on the background when you're trying to deal with the meeting. So uh, I would just like to say that we've opted not to try to use the city equipment. It's generous of you to offer it, but I don't have anybody willing to come in and manage it. And I'm sitting over there on a computer. I can't deal with somebody over here touching the equipment. I can't find somebody to control any of the other in-person people. So anyway, thank you, but we are just going to stay with the required audio for now. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, city staff, for all your hard work. But otherwise, pass. Yes. Yeah, okay, Jennifer. Okay. I'm good this time. All right. Okay, and uh, I. I uh, just want to acknowledge that I've gotten a lot of emails about uh, Shaw's with the um, mask compliance. And I, if I understand correctly, we may be taking up some amendments to the mask policy at potentially at our next meeting. Um, so just to anticipate that. Anything else that we want to say about that? Well, I'll do that in Okay. Um, uh yeah that's that's it for now for me 
Um, actually, it's John on here. I don't think so. No, I don't see him. Okay, I so he. Told him do notes for him. Okay, great. So, uh, Bill, go ahead. So, a couple of things. As the mayor mentioned, um, so we have had a lot of comments about Shaw's, and we are, you know, following up with them. One of the challenges that we've not observed is anyone that works for Shaw's being without their mask, but certainly some many customers are and they're not turning them away at the door and you know, as it was last time that's a difficult position to put them in. Um, you know, we can talk you can talk if you want next week whether to add monetary fines um, that is allowed in the in the statute we opted not to in the proposal to try to see how that worked. Um, and that could be for the violating individual and or the business. The, specifically, you know, there was an article in the, the paper that highlighted, um, in fact, at the last meeting, we passed a mandate that, that took out the part about someone being alone. Uh, and at the same time, we passed a city policy that said, if, if you're working alone at your desk and all this stuff, it's okay. So we had, you know, we had contradictory things. So we're gonna try to, and, and it goes beyond just city employees. If you think about it, if you're a store owner and you've got a back office office technically under our mandate, you're supposed to be, because your business is open to the public, you're supposed to be masked even if you're alone in your own office. So we're gonna to try to make that uh, more realistic and more, more in, in, in line with the, so we'll have a draft amendment on that. And then if you wish to, to do anything else with enforcement, um, we're certainly happy to talk about that. Um, so there's that. Uh, we do have the legislators next week in our legislative agenda. I was trying to think what else we had um, just queue up. I mentioned this to the mayor, but I'll just say it. Um, this is early, but um, uh, because the mayor will be out a bit in January, just remind people that this I do have a, my review comes up in February, and this is a year that my contract expires. So we would want to talk about that. So um, that's all. Be thinking about that. Normally, we don't talk about that till we kind of finish this process, and we're into January, and the mayor coordinates all that. But she may be out, I'm so be out. so we should connect so, about that. Um, there's that. We'll all write our and evaluation on a Christmas card. There you go. <laughs> With a lump of coal. That's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. Right. So, okay. Okay. What's that? Wood, wood pellets. Wood pellets. Wood pellets. I can use those. I just bought a pellet. So. There you go. There you go. Uh, that's Great. all. Okay. All okay. right. So is there anything else? Um, no. Anything sorry. else I'm supposed to tell them? No. No, you're good. <laughs> okay. Great. Well, all right. Well, thank you, everybody. And uh, so, without objection, we are going to adjourn at ten eighteen. Thank you very much. <laughs>